Black power. 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 Very, very good. You are now tuning in again. We thank all of you out there who are listening, who have been attentive as you have been, who's been as attentive as you have been. We are now getting started and getting rolling. This is the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey, Black Power Children's Hour, brought to you by the Revolutionary Black Panther Party. One more good time. The Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey, Black Power Children's Hour, brought to you by the Revolutionary Black Panther Party. Right now, we got the Black Panther Cubs on deck, and they will be breaking down some serious information tonight. Again, the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey, Black Power Children's Hour. We must understand the value of the youth because the youth is our passport to the future. So when we understand their value and their importance and their contribution that they make, I mean, even their existence is a contribution, but to be learned youth. And I don't mean just no dress up youth. I don't mean you just put them out there. You put them in costume and garb. I mean to be learned youth that would actually go out to retain information and to Study hard so that they could actually deal with the importance of the race and our people and humanity as a whole. There's nothing more stronger. There's nothing more important than the youth who have knowledge, revolutionary youth. And if you are a parent, you must make it your duty if you are obligated to the struggle of our people to be a revolutionary parent. So we got the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Gavi Black Power Children's Hour, Revolutionary Black Panther Party radio broadcast for Thursday, August the 10th, 2017. So who do we have coming up first? Black Power, we got this young, bold general. This is General Shaka. I know most of you are used to just hearing their voices. Now you can see their faces. And who do you have with some words of wisdom that you'll be dropping on us tonight from? Marcus Garvey. Ashe, drop it on us. Men who are earnest aren't afraid of consequences. Black power! 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 Who are we? RBPP! Who are we? RBPP! Who are we? RBPP! Who are we? RBPP! Everywhere we go! People wanna know! And where do we come from? Revolution. Where do we come from? Revolution. Where do we come from? Revolution. Who are we? RBPP. Very, very good. Black power. 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 Very good. We got coming up next this bold revolutionary young general. These are cup generals. We have the bold esteemed general here who will be dropping down powerful wisdom to you tonight. Who do you have us some wisdom from, General? Mm, is it Marcus Garvey? Marcus Garvey, what is your quote? Is your quote? What's your quote? Um, Come on, think, 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 think deeply now. <laughs> you don't have to touch your head. You don't have to touch your head. Don't um, be shy. Um, um, is this a piece of what again? Up to you. Go ahead. Black Power. We're going to give him, you, think about your quote. And you come with your quote, Revolutionary Queen. What's your quote? Um, education is the password for the future. Very good. And who is that by? Michael Max. Ashe, uh, Black Power. Black Power. Very good, very good, very good. Next, we have the Bold Panther the Youth Squad Leader, General Santo. You have some quote from tonight. Michael Max. And what is your quote? You can't separate peace from freedom because no one is at peace unless he has freedom. Black power! 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 Good. Next we have the Panther Youth Minister of Culture. This is General Heru. And who do you have with some words of wisdom from, General Heru? Marcus Garvey. Okay, drop it on us. You have no self-confidence. You lose twice in a race of life. Black power! Black power! Very good, very good. Next we have this Panther Youth General. This is General Mhotep. And who do you have us some words of wisdom from? Huey P. Newton. Ah, uh, Shay, always Huey. Huh? Drop it on us. Laws should be made to serve the people. People should not be made to serve the laws. Black power! Black power! Black power. Very good, very good. And we have Young Queen and Zynga, the Panther Youth Chief of Staff. Who you have us some words of wisdom from? Dr. Francis Cosmos. Okay, drop it on us. Racism is a universal operating system of white supremacy. Black power. 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 So in the meantime, y'all drop if you if you're not too shy. 
I guess some of your um, your lyrics on them. Go ahead. You you can go. Go ahead. You can go ahead. I'm aiming for my path. My pocket's full of mass. Educated and I'm black, my own will keep me on track. Liberation for my people, nothing more, nothing less. Crackers back. Keep your stupid lies, cause the truth keep me fresh. So crackers are pigs and they ain't saying nothing. A hundred sticking crackers can't tell me nothing. So we shooting crackers back. We shooting crackers back. So we shooting crackers back. Uncle Black Power. We shooting crackers back. Uncle Black Power. So you ready now? Yeah. What's your quote? Um, um, on the price of freedom is death. By who? Marcus Garvey. That don't sound like Marcus Garvey. It sound like Michael Metz. We're going to oh, let yeah, you Michael slide. Metz. You better be doing your studies. Next time, don't be sleeping on them. Good. Black Power, you did good. Give him a round of applause. Black Power's a little. Black Power, you did good. Give him, give him a round of applause. Black Power, very good. Very good. Very good. So, do y'all have anything y'all like to share with the audience? Y'all are live. you have anything you like to express? Anything at all? Um, 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 should we say more songs? Nah, you don't need any more songs. you have any wisdom you want to, extra wisdom you want to drop? Or because um we had you learning all day, you know, with your school work and everything, are you all ready to be at ease or you have something you like to express? Are you y'all look tired? Yes. At ease? I'm all right, tell the people y'all revolutionary love and black power. Revolutionary love and black power. 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 Who are we? R-E-B-B. Now where do we come from? The revolution. Where do we come from? The revolution. Where do we come from? Revolution. Where do we come from? Revolution. Very good. And for those of you who really don't understand some of the stuff you see right here, it says, for every panther, for every panther and POW, prisoner of war, who was slain, there's a panther mother and panther woman who's here to bring revolution and also has the power and strength to bring cubs to the revolution. Black power. Black power. Black power. And the Black wisdom power. here. The panther cub. The panther cub. The black youth. Children of the revolution, the backbone of the revolution, and the foundation of our liberty. Black power! Black power! Very good. Revolutionary love and black power, family. Black power. Black power. So, black power. one more time. Get to show the people some love. I know they love y'all. Revolutionary love and black power. Revolutionary love and black power. Black power! Black power! Black power! Black power! Black power! Okay, y'all are at ease. Black power. Black power. Okay, very good. To the listening audience. So now we're going to be preparing for the news hour. We thank y'all for being as attentive as you have been. And we'll be right black with you. Black power. Black power.
Black power. Black power. Black power to the radio audience and to those who are listening live. Black power. We are black. We are black on revolutionary love and black power. So right now we're bringing to you the RBPP news report for this week. Black power. Go ahead, Deputy Chief. Black Power, um, one second. Hello, uh, Mother. I am doing a news broadcast. That's what I'm doing. I do see you, love. I love you. You gonna watch? You gonna sit? You gonna stay and watch? I hope you do. Look, she talking. Okay. Look. <laughs> it's all good. Go ahead, Black but, uh, Power. Black Power. Um, uh, today we will be speaking about Colin um, Kaepernick mm-hmm. and also some facts about Trump. But um, the whole thing with Colin Kaepernick is. Um, very uh, disturbing because because he's still you know not being able to be signed and he's being targeted because of what he did um, by kneeling during the um, the national anthem because he understood the meaning of what the song really meant so he was basically educating all of us about that and he sparked the world um, through in his schools of uh, kids were kneeling um, or sitting down whenever the um, National Anthem will come on and, you know, they basically um, said a lot about our black teens and our, and our children, our youth, that they want to be heard as well. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's one thing. We do need to stand behind our brother because, uh, you know, the world is against him right now and he needs our support big time. And they, I think they're talking about boycotting the NFL headquarters um, about him not being able to be signed. So that's one thing that we should be able to support him, um, no doubt, because he he had guts to sit and and you know and kneel during the time of his the spark of his career, and he put all that you know on on you know risk all of that just to have a voice, and it did speak for all of us that we are you know we want to be heard, and also <laughs> with the things with you know the Trump era and and how he's really targeting us as. Black people, and also, you know, what he's doing with North Korea, that's, you know, that's a bunch of BS, because that's the last thing we need, you know what I'm saying, that just being, you know, having to live in the time to where we always have lived in the time to where we always have to worry about uh, missiles being launched this way, so he's, you know, he's basically only showing himself as being what he is, and that's being very uneducated, but um, do you have anything that you want to speak about? Absolutely. Um... And getting into the report, um, as the deputy chief so greatly explained, number one, Brother Kaepernick is being targeted because of the fact that what he did, for the most part, was an actual straight up kick against white supremacy. Most of you don't even understand what that anthem means and all of the stuff they put in there and the star spangled, you know, banner things and all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, that anthem talked about 
yeah. your abuse, abusing you and the continuity of your bondage. And let me right. tell you something. We are Holocaust victims. Let's get that straight. If you can't get that straight, then there's really not too much else you can get straight. We are Holocaust victims. And if a song actually exists that is behind a nation state that was intricately involved in a Holocaust, in our Holocaust, and then one of us, a member of the family, some of you say, well, I don't know if you're a member of the family because of this or that. Mm -hmm. Stop playing with it. You know science. You know the science of genetics and the science of biology. So we know who he is. As a matter of fact, you don't have to tell racist white folks that because they know. Mm -hmm. They ostracized him. Put it like this, for example. What happened to Mike Vick should have never happened to him. But they found a way to slide him back in while the mm -hmm. hell they put towards him. You know how they like their dog, so and they let him back in. But all Kaepernick did was kneel yeah. yep. before the anthem. Right. And he kneeled. And for that, they targeted him. So it's very serious. And as the Queen was talking about this whole thing um with North Korea and Trump, you must understand to overstand that just because somebody makes some propaganda about a group of people don't mean that's true. You know, this, this is the same kind of propaganda that was waged against many people who we find out later was very innocent. Some of us knew from the beginning they was innocent, but there are those of us who found out later they were innocent. So we don't really have any time to sit back in and, and for the most part, suck up or indulge in this propaganda with North Korea. Because when you really understand what they have waged against our people, they will use this scenario with Korea as one of the scenarios to make extra moves against us because they're already moving against us, if you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. There's nothing new that they could do to us that they haven't done already. Some say, well, you know what, man, let's prepare. I mean, we got to, because you know what I'm saying? Hey, well, they're going to stop martial law and they're going to start kicking our doors in. Well, have they're you been to the hood lately? They already do that. They okay. kick Negroes' doors down every day. They kick our door. They're going to round you up. They round Negroes up. Every day they are rounding us up. Mm -hmm. Every day they are kicking down our doors. Every day they are murdering us. Every 28 hours we are being assassinated and exterminated and victims of mass genocide in this country. So that's not really the dilemma. But, it, but it's even much more serious than that. Much more serious. Much more serious. Um, and we have to really understand how serious it is. Okay, now they put this. my signals back on. Signal such good. madness. Oh. Very, very much. Such madness. Both. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Such madness. What? But moving right along. Yeah, you see if you see if yours are recycled a cycle back. That is the biggest foolishness um that could be done right now. Really? So yours ain't coming back in, huh? I guess they don't like what we're talking about. <laughs> of course they don't like what we're talking about. That's why they blocked my page. <laughs> they blocked my page for no no explanation. They just say you are blocked thirty days. All I know is I'm blocked for thirty days. So you gotta do probably a part two. Very good. My okay, goodness. sorry y'all. We um my phone somehow Leave it. It's it's alright. It's gonna it's gonna um, do what it okay, do. Okay. Yeah, very okay. good. Okay, so my phone was paused for a little second, but we're back now. Wait, ask everybody on your phone. Are we sideways on your phone? Are we sideways? Can y'all see us up Because <laughs> <laughs> we tried to Because it said your thing said something but turn it this way or that it way. Said and it did say that but my, I can see the camera, I just can't Okay, see all right, so we good, we good. I mean, we're, I don't know. It's all good. That's all good. Are, are we sideways? First off, are we on my on my head? Can anybody? I I, I guess they're not even yeah, speaking. Somebody right. say something soon. Yes, indeed. Let me know if it's sideways, but. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So, um, for those of you who are out there, just getting in, you're listening to the Revolutionary Black Panther Party radio broadcast for Thursday, August the tenth, twenty seventeen. Tonight's topic is the origins of Black people's crabs and a barrel mentality. That's the topic. Uh, right now, you are tuning into the RVPP News Report. I'm brought to you here by the Deputy Chief. And as she was discussing about Kaepernick mm -hmm. and um, how he was, you know, being targeted and the reasons why. And we have to really understand how serious things are. We're good? On your I don't know. You say yes. I don't know what yes means. Okay, can can you tell me if I'm if we're sideways on y'all? On my end, I know we're good. But those of you who listen on my watching on my end, I'm talking about on the deputy chief's end, um, deputy chief Amina, is everything good? I guess they'll tell you if you sideways. But someone said yes, but I don't, really don't know. If yes means sideways. Yeah, actually. yes can mean I could because I think you asked, can y'all see me good or am I sideways? I don't know. <laughs> Wait, a hell, hell of a time to be sideways, and we talking about crabs, right? But we don't mean it like that. 
Huh? We're talking about the camera sideways. <laughs> but as far as calling, um, I mean, don't worry about okay, that. We're good. If there was an issue, okay, that we would know. Okay, but anyway, about him though, it's just um, it's it's crazy how you see how things change. I understand how they did. Um, what's his name? Tiger Tiger Woods. He, I mean. He's, Hell, he's I, one, he's I, black I, I understand how Tiger how Tiger Woods <laughs> he did just, Tiger Woods. He, just, he the one that told <laughs> us that he was a cobbler, complic, whatever the hell he said he was, and then the other folks told him exactly who he was and and exactly what he was. And um in essence, there are things that we really have to understand. You so self conscious about this thing. No, it, they told me it was uh, Oh, did it sideways? Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how it's gonna stay now because oh, you have to take the um take this right. out and um and then we could just stand it up right. There you go. That's right, that's nice. And your your camera's always <laughs> better than mine. I don't know what's going on with mine, but yours is always better. Your um. Okay. Let's get off yeah, your camera's always much better than mine. You ain't got to do all of that just this. I want to I'm gonna move over, so you have to. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you. You are. So you could just leave it on. Anyway, well, on yourself, but continue. Just, Give me one second. Is is um. You know, as much time that he put in to play NFL football or ent entertain people, and he takes a kneel, I'm not saying the word, but he kneels down just to show, you know, that he has a voice and he wants to address something that nobody talks about. And for, you know, for his sponsors and the people that he, you know, that was, supposed to, was supposed to be behind him, you know, they are now turning their back on him because... He decided to stand up for what he believed was right, and I feel that that was the most brave. You know, that's the that anybody that's brave, you know, what I'm saying they can be brave, but to do something like that, you have to have really, you know, really takes guts because he can. He's jeopardizing everything he's ever built, and he's jeopardizing his reputation. And for us not to support him, you know, what I'm saying that'd be you know messed up on our part. So us supporting him is really, um, really important. Indeed, indeed. For those of you who actually do, and for those of you who are like, well, I don't really care too much about this or that, then of course, um, some aspects of that don't apply to you. So, Queen, uh, what else would you like to add? Um, I don't know. Anything else that you want? <laughs> well, that's the news. That we're talking about. <laughs> I mean, that's about. That's we're like talking about Colin. Important so, thing that was on my mind today so, was. Um, Colin Kaepernick, him. so and the whole missile thing with Trump saying that he's gonna um, drop the bomb on yeah. Ghana, 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 Ghana. Where the heck did Ghana come not from? Not Ghana, but it's somewhere not not there. So I can't remember the name. Anyway, well, you you have to fill me in on that. That's the information. <laughs> he, I know he get. said he was gonna. They said North Korea was supposed to drop a bomb, and. They're not dropping no bomb. Name. Well, you, 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 but you, you, no, you, 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 and the Pan African community and the Black Man community. Had to to say, he didn't up. say nothing but no gun. No, I know he said nothing but gun. That shouldn't make him turn up by me saying that. Now they need to be turned up anyway. Period. <laughs> yeah. Now yeah. they didn't. I don't know what she is referring well, to, but if she, they did not say up. nothing but bombing no Ghana though. No, I know not Ghana. I said I can't remember <laughs> the name of it. I just read it. I know they didn't say Ghana. Oh Guam. Guam. There you Guam. go. Okay. Thank you. See, he Guam. just mm, he don't want to see her. He knew what I was talking about. Thank you, sir. Guam. Thank you, Andre. Thank Guam. You. Okay, so Guam. Yeah. one of the U.S. um, what do you call it? It's a protectorate. U.S. is a protectorate of Guam, something yeah. to that effect. Yeah, he was like, so, yeah. so that's still like considered the U.S. Yeah, Guam, 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 you know all of that. Real going they gonna know next time not to. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, so he's talking mad, you know, mad crap. But yeah, the the, st the stuff he on, the stuff he talks about is just ridiculous. It's really childish, and to have a white boy like that anyway is a problem. And I have to call him exactly what he is. Yeah, he, he's, he's a white boy. He ain't no grown man. He's a boy. And to have a boy like that anywhere is a problem because boys like that create trouble. Mm -hmm. They create issues and, and they create trouble. And and the whole point is that we have to really, really be serious about anything we put our time and energy towards. And when you have somebody like that, first of all, I'm just saying, oh, I am. no parts of him. Should we be taking, uh, what's the best way to put it, serious when he makes statements? But I am saying there's some of us who would actually waste their time with that. And ain't nothing he ever going to say that's going to be supportive or right and exact. Uh, he's a person that, for the most part, is a degenerate. And I'm going to tell you all something about it. 
Yeah, you got these bastards trying to act like this. They're so, um, what's the best way to put it? He's so, he's so esteemed. And the goddamn Trump family started their entire legacy on bootleg looking prostitutes. If you think I'm lying, look it up. What did I say? I said, Trump, that old inbred bastard established the Trump family legacy is established on bootleg liquor and prostitutes. Mm -hmm. That's their story. That's their story. So without further ado, if you're good, um, we can actually get yeah, started. Yeah, get with... started. Okay, so what we're going to do um, momentarily, give us a moment to get started. We're going to get officially started with the topic for tonight. Uh, we thank all of you for being as attentive as you have been and just give us a few moments and we will be started. Black Power. Oh, hey, hold on! You talking your beautiful you, queen? What, what, what about your, your handsome son-in-law? <laughs> I'm joking. I love you too, baby. <laughs> black power, y'all. Black power. Black power. So we are black. We are black. For those of you in Radio Land listening in, uh, we are black on. So tonight's topic is a very serious topic. What is the topic for tonight? Tonight, what we are dealing with. Serious, serious topic. The crab in a barrel mentality. Crabs in a barrel mentality that we as a people have. So without further ado, I will officially get started. Rest to the side. We're good. Good. <clears throat> and black power to the family. And much respect to those of you who were being very attentive. I thank all of you for being as attentive as you have been from the very beginning of the broadcast tonight. I thank those of you who are still dedicated, even though um, this li the live last year was, I mean, last week was on fire. We got over, I think, like over 200 shares. It's very powerful. And then all of a sudden, I'm blocked on Facebook. But, hey, as a people, we you, we the same people that the enemy gave us lemons while they were using oranges. And we threw some sugar on it to make lemonade. That's the kind of people we are. So you can throw anything at us. 
Uh, we are people who know how to make the best out of any situation that we're put in. We're that strong. This is also why we survive as long as we have. So without further delay, I'm officially getting started. In the name of the Supreme Being, the Divine Essence, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I greet you, my beautiful and beloved black brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. And for some members of the family, we say shalom alaikum. And for other members of the family, we say hotep, ma'at hotep, shimi hotep, and em hotep. For one great member of the family, we say free the lands. By any means, by any means. And another science much deeper in that science, we say free the lands and free the people by any and all means necessary. One great member of the family, we say, Korea, what's up, cuz? To another great member of the family, we say, so who, what's up, blood? To another great member of the family, we say, GD, folk, disciple, disciple. And to another great member of the family, we say, almighty, almighty, greetings, blessed. One love in all stages and phases and connections and extensions and legacies of black love, black laws and black power indeed for all black people. So the subject matter tonight is origins of black people's crabs in a barrel mentality. That's the short title, long title. The origins of black people's crab in a barrel mentality. The origins of black people's self-hatred, toxic jealousy, and crabs in a barrel mentality, part two. Part two, that's the long title. So what is it? As a people, black people, collectively, we are victims of a pandemic crabs in a barrel mentality that compels us to usurp, that compels us to dismantle, that compels us to divide, to bite, to mimic, to mock, to slander and destroy our communities, our families, our groups, our organizations, our churches, our mosques, our temples, our militaries, and mostly almost like a contagious, touchable virus, anything that we touch or come in contact or communication with. And you know, I'm trying to make sure that this, um, I guess it will show us if, if, yeah. if okay, very good. So it's a very serious issue, very serious topic. But the question, like all questions, whenever we experience these things is what are the origins? Because it's easy to beat down somebody. It's easy to see someone, especially like how we do each other, which is a part of the toxic self-hatred we have, which was covered last week. You can actually get that in the archives or you can also go to YouTube, which um, the title should be Dr. Ali Muhammad, MD, breaks down the origins of self-hatred, you should be able to find it there, but moving right along. So it's easy to beat each other down. It's easy for me to tell you, hey man, you ain't no good. Easy. It's easy for me to tell you, man, you know what? I can't stand you because of this or that. It's easy to point the finger. But it's another thing to really understand the origins of where it comes from. The origins of it. Because the origins is so deep so deep, so deep is deep, but the actual behavior is ongoing. It's been around for a long time. It's like we can go back 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, 80 years, 90 years. And as far as we can go black, we will find that some of these same issues, the division, the usurping, the mimic, the mockery, the biting, all the different things that we do, we can trace it back and see that every group that we've had, every church, every mosque, every temple, every organization, every leader that's been amongst us has been a victim of this kind of behavior. All of them. Some of the best we've had amongst us. The Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Uh, who did I say? The Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Up, oh, you mighty race. And accomplish what you... Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Accomplish what? You can accomplish what? In essence, paraphrasing Garvey, whatever you put your mind and heart to, he taught us. We can accomplish what we will. The Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey came amongst us. Had our liberation in his hand. And what did we do? There were those amongst us 
jealous, envious crabs who not only capitulated with the enemy, but also without working directly with the enemy, look for the enemy so that they could get Garvey out of the way. Lied on him, slandered him, said all sorts of horrible things about him. And then later the stories told that all of it was a lie. But it didn't help for anything because Garvey was gone and Garvey is gone physically from us. But who he is and what he is would always live amongst us. So last week I covered, first and foremost, for those of you who are listening for the first time, and we got to get into the origins before I even get into what we covered last week. The question is, what is the origins of it? So let's deal with it now. Because out of all of our studies, empirical, empirical now. And whenever we approach information that we give to our people, it must be empirical information. We respect opinions. We do. We respect people's feelings and emotions. We do. We have to if we don't then we are not doing right by ourselves and right by our people. However, when we give information to the people, information that's supposed to change the people's life, that it must be empirical information to the best of our abilities. Out of all of our studies, empirical science family is best qualified and most attractive to reward us with the empirical data and the empirical information necessary to deal with our condition on an empirically scientific level. Out of all of our studies, no matter what your position is, whether you're atheist or agnostic or a spiritual or religious person, or just like I said, you're on a different thing. You don't even deal with anything like that. But empirical script and scripture, the writings on the wall, are the base of morality, are the base of law, are the base of that which guides people and provides civility to the people on an informative level. Out of all of our studies, family, empirical sociology is best qualified and most attractive to reward us with an empirical sociological base so that we can understand this race-based stratification that we are under, where People of African descent have been imposed into social subordinates by an unqualified social majority. Out of all of our studies, family, empirical psychology is best qualified and most attractive to reward us with an empirical psychoanalysis so that we're able to clearly, clearly now, in an empirical way, understand what it is that we are going through on a psychological level, understand our condition, understand the position that we've been put in, and also understand the condition of those who put us under our condition. Out of all of our studies, family, empirical history, your story, our story, the black story is most attractive and best qualified to reward our research because if we know or knew what happened yesterday, we can intelligently intelligently in a tangible way understand today because today is built and based on yesterday family and tomorrow indeed is built and based on today know what i'm talking about so let's deal with this now this origins thing because again too often we just vent and we talk trash about each other it's easy to do it we'll even Put those off the hook who put us in a position and say, well, you know, we are our worst enemy. We are not our worst enemy, family. Number one, we are not our worst enemy. Anytime you think you're your worst enemy, you just committed psychological suicide. Don't ever say and don't ever think and don't ever repeat that we are our worst enemy. As a matter of fact, lesson number one for the day is this is the preliminary lesson to to mark that out of your mind, out of your words and out of your thoughts. That we are our worst enemy because we are not our worst enemy. That's number one. We are not. We can be a notorious enemy to each other because of the fact how we look around each other. But we are not the orchestrators of that enmity. So we are not our worst enemy. So you can erase that if that is something that you have established. And are you talking to one who's been, for the most part, hell, when the enemy has come their hardest against me. They've never came in white skin. They always come in the skin 
of Oz. So I should be one of the last to tell you something like that, but I'll be irresponsible because of something that I have gone through with our people to try to let my emotions and would be some petty way of thinking too interfere with the facts and the truth. And we are not our worst enemy. So I just want to make that clear. We are not that. So before I even uh, continue, no, we are not our worst enemies. Those of you who are here, you may want to get pen and pencil. You may also want to invite other family members if they're still up, depending on where you are. If you're on the West Coast, you're good. You're on the East Coast. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be burning the midnight oil with us. You know what I'm talking about? That's how things going to be here for you. So what is the origins now? The origins of this crabs in a barrel mentality that our people have. And for those of you who are just coming in, I go over the title one more time with you. One more time, family. Go over the title one more time. Tonight's topic is, family, the origins of black people's crabs in a barrel mentality. The origins of black people's crab in a barrel mentality is the short title. The actual long title is the origins of black people's self-hatred, toxic jealousy, and crabs in a barrel mentality, part two. Asking serious questions. Some of those serious questions are, or making a point first, black people's, black people collectively being targets or victims of a pandemic crabs in a barrel mentality that compels us to usurp, dismantle, divide, bite, mimic, slander, and destroy our groups as a people, our churches, mosques, temples, organizations, and military, combined with an abnormal or toxic form of jealousy and self-hatred that leads us to the murder, death, destruction, and total dismantling, again, of our groups, leaders, families, communities, countries, and nations. Again, however, what is the origins of all of it? So let's deal with the family. I would like for you, family, to get pen and paper. I would like for you to do that, to get pen and paper. Like for you to get ready to take serious notes, family. Serious notes, because this is very serious. So what is the origins of our issues? Number one, we suffer from a condition. Now, all respect and accolades given to Dr. Franz Fanon, who was the first amongst us to let us know that we as a people suffer from race-based trauma. No one could do it no better, especially at the time. Dr. Francis Cross Wilson, Ashe, Dr. Nellie Fuller, Dr. Bobby Wright, Dr. Naeem Akbar, and Dr. Amos Wilson, and Dr. Joy the Greer, the best amongst us have been able to give us empirical data on what it is we experience on a traumatic level, racially speaking, because of our condition. It was Dr. Nellie Fuller, is Dr. Nellie Fuller, who teaches us that if we do not understand racism, he science empirically that racism was white supremacy. If we do not understand racism, white supremacy, then our understanding of everything else would only serve to confuse us. And I'm here to tell you now tonight, family, if you do not understand that there's a war waged against you, waged against people of African descent, waged against you melanin people, when a color of our skin of no volition of our own is our official uniform. We didn't choose it, but it's dumped on us. And if you don't understand that, it'll only serve to get you murked, serve to get us all murked. And it's serving in many ways to get us murked because every 28 hours in this country, a person of African descent is a victim by agents of the state known as law enforcement. So let's get into the origins now. See, Dr. Joy de Gras, Bold, beautiful, revolutionary black psychologist breaks down to us the post traumatic slavery syndrome, a race based PTSD as a result of slavery. Beautiful, brilliant, and powerful. Now, I myself diagnose that we as a people suffer from what I diagnose as the traumatic black African Holocaust disorder. Now, let me break this down to you now. Now, this particular condition is unique because whereas PTSD coming after the people who are victims of trauma or witnesses to trauma, 
can usually and may usually have PTSD as a result of either being witnesses or directly involved as the targets of the trauma, but not everybody, but usually most people who are victims of it have that, end up with it, right? So here's the thing now, our condition is even much deeper than that. See the traumatic black African Holocaust disorder that I diagnosed that we have coming out of the Dr. Ali Muhammad Black African School of Neuropsychology, coming out of the Black African, Black African psychology. Why do I even deal with our issues the way that I do? Because it is important that those amongst us who have the power and ability and the knowledge to help and aid us do that for us. Because in the field of the, the actual sciences that have been used to study psychology is limited when it comes and dealing with what is rendered in psychiatry is limited when it deals with us because two to four percent only two to four percent of psychologists and psychiatrists are black one more time only two to four percent are black two to four percent and when it comes to counseling it's roughly the same statistic like two like two percent are black. So when they make the di diagnostic and statistical manual of mental disorders, I mean, they're not um, really paying any too close attention to who you are and what your experience is because you're not actually there. And this is why our conditions are much longer, much stronger, more serious and much deeper because they're not studying you. And as a matter of fact, we got to make sure that this particular thing don't go out on us. You all give me one good second and let me get this situated. I'm hoping that it's going to be good. All right, there we go. Ah, that's hopefully that's all right. Ah, goodness. Trying to fix this camera, y'all, on this other feed that we have. Ah, goodness. <laughs> I don't know if you're gonna be working. Oh, you're gonna work the yeah. You got you're gonna have to work the magic because <laughs> my my magic is is totally um insufficient at this point. <laughs> Dealing with that. Okay, you got this. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna work like that. Y'all get bear with us for one second as we try to get this camera situation. Don't laugh. <laughs> it's it not funny. It ain't, it ain't funny. <laughs> I'm just talking about my little camera magic. It ain't funny. My other magic always working. Y'all see how many babies? I'm joking. You better stop that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, good. Okay. See, I told you I can work my magic. Baby. All right, but she done work her magic. It's a little sideways, but it's the sideways magic. So I get you get through it like like that. But anyway, <laughs> like sideways magic. But it's all good. So so getting back to the point though. So, and dealing with the issues now, what makes a traumatic black African Holocaust disorder unique is the fact that we don't just suffer from an after effect, some post effect of trauma. See, the trauma that we have is ongoing, it's past, of course, but ongoing, reoccurring, and some of it just being um, dropped on us right now while I'm speaking. So that's what makes the traumatic black African Holocaust disorder unique. And not only does that make it unique, but there's also corollaries and offshots of it. For example, traumatic black obtrusive paranoid personality disorder that I diagnosed that we have. What's a good example of that? Well, let's say, for instance, you, you, some of you, you've never committed any type of so-called crimes in your life. Your license is straight. Registration is straight. Your insurance is straight and you're in your vehicle. And all of a sudden, a police car pulls up behind your vehicle and your heart starts pacing and you start getting nervous and you start saying, man, I, I hope they don't pull me over. That is not sane. That is insane. But that is the traumatic black, traumatic black obtrusive paranoid personality disorder that, of course, I diagnosed that we have as a race and people as a result of our Holocaust, as a result of our Holocaust. Now I'm moving right along. So let's deal with the origins now. What is? I know you. You sitting here still trying to. You're not. Stop. 
You're not going to. 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 I say queens, plural, so that's you and the rest of the sisters. Well, you know, they could be perfectionists at times. So, okay. Well, the only one of y'all in here right now, so y'all can't jump me, so I could talk. So, anyways, um, <laughs> now that it's equal playing, I'm joking. So, getting back to the point, though. So, <laughs> so it's unique due to the fact that our condition is not just an after dynamic, but it's past of course ongoing it is present and like i said right now there is issues and conditions being created and for the most part something else and something new always being dropped on us as a people so that's what makes t-bad traumatic black african holocaust disorder unique also the fact that it has corollaries and i'm just talking about the traumatic black obtrusive paranoid personality disorder but what is the origins of it is the question of the night right the origins of it the origins where did it come from so let's deal with it now let's deal with it imagine the ancestor the african what happened to black african nation states black african nation states were invaded, were pillaged. But imagine the black African ancestor, the black African child, the elder, the mothers, the fathers, the grandmothers and grandfathers and cousins, uncles and aunties. But imagine those ancestors who had to witness the entire nation state. Don't use the, I don't use the word tribe. They do that. The enemy throws that out there to try to marginalize who and what we are. We're talking about black African nation states. Black African nation states invaded. And black African people were taken and stripped and robbed of everything that we had that constituted our humanity. But imagine the ancestors who had to witness the entire nation state, their children, their grandchildren, their grandbabies, their parents, all of that being beaten and stripped and raped and then thrown in the hells and holes of ships. And then all those ships, rape and torture being the daily diet for the black African woman mm -hmm. and brothers weighing off the hood, the black African man too. Some of you know about buck breaking and so you on with it in that way, but of course we're talking about too the wench breaking and the picking any breaking where they would break down the babies, the men and the women. But rape was the daily diet for the black African woman and at times the black African man. When those ships reached their destination, they would actually have groups of us come off the ships. And then after groups of us would come off those ships, they would in turn. And I'm going to tell y'all something who are out there listening. If you would like to say something, have any questions, it's best that you also call in to the broadcast. It's at area code uh, one number you can get through 515-602-9696, 515-602-9696 to get in. Area code 515-602-9696 if you want to call in. Because in about a little a little time from now, you may not be able to call in, so you may not be able to ask any questions. So I'm just putting that out there. Again, that number is 515-602-9696. So you can call in before that time comes that you won't be able to call anymore. Moving right along. So imagine those ancestors who witnessed that trauma. Then when the ships reached their destination and they had groups of us come off the ships, Many of a time you would have that brother on the ship, no matter how large or how small, but just how revolutionary, black, African, and strong, would try to break the, himself out of the goddamn shackles on the ships, who would not take bondage lying down, who would do everything possible to, to get out of the situation, where well, they would find that African that made an impression on all the other Africans and take him and tie him up. Sometimes it was a large brother because they have this thing of sizing, what they call sizing niggas up. 
when you study how our nation states were invaded, you would note that they went to the statues of black African men, the totems of black African men, and broke the phallus off of those statues, always sizing us up, always doing that. And many of the times during the lynchings, the black male's reproductive organ will be cut off and auctioned, auctioned and even put in jars, put in jars. This is what they did to us. But getting black to the point. So take that black African man and hang him upside down. And they would find a black African woman, usually who's pregnant. And not only is she or was she pregnant, but pregnant by rape, pregnant by being raped by the aggressor, being raped by the oppressor. And they would hang her upside down right next to him and then take a sharp instrument. And slice open the stomach of that black African woman and stick their mutant hands into a womb and snatch the baby out and then crush the baby's head with their boot heels. Sometimes they would use another large instrument or take their rifle butts and bash the baby's head open or have groups and hordes of them come over and crush the baby's head right there. And they would also take that black African man cut off his reproductive organ. Blood would pour down his face and make mud puddles under his head. And any black African who would ooh and ah over the sight of this torture, trauma being imposed on the black African man and woman will be beaten in their mouth and shot in their throat if they said anything and if they showed any expressions, they themselves would be injured. Take the black African man Tie ropes to both of his hands, to his right hand, to his left hand, to his neck at times, sometimes his reproductive organ, to his right leg and to his left leg. And after that, take the black African woman, tie ropes to both her arms and both her legs, sometimes her breast if he could, and sometimes her neck. Take those ropes or binds and tie them to large animals, an oxen, horse, or some large animal. Then scare, beat, or shoot these animals and have them go in opposite directions to rip open the black African life. In many of a time, the black African woman was pregnant and a baby would be there. And they would either have another large animal crush that baby or they themselves would take their boots or, or their rifle butts. This is the origins of curb stumping. And they would crush that black baby's skull. Now, this kind of behavior continued even into the 20s on record. Look up Sister Mary Turner, 1921, where no good cracker bastards hung her upside down and sliced open her stomach and took the baby out of her womb. And not one cracker, not two, not three, but damn near 50 crackers, according to some records, crushed the baby's skull. And they buried them in an unmarked grave. The only thing that, that was any kind of, um, for the most part, marker that someone was there was a jar with a cigar in it. That's what they did to her. 1921. Sister Mary Turner. Look her up. Look her up. But moving right along. Any African who would ooh and ah over the black life being ripped apart would be beaten and injured themselves. And then the cracker would take the black Africans, the survivors, and say, now you look at here, boy. I know your name is Babatunde, but I want you to know right now, you see what happened to that nigga over there? We tore that nigger ass apart. We tore that nigger apart. And if you don't want the same thing to happen to you, boy, you're going to listen to what I'm saying. Your name is no longer Babatunde. Your name is Bobby, nigga. Come here, gal. Talking about your name is what in Zinger? That ain't your name anymore, gal. Your name is Sally, gal. And if you don't shut up, you'll be just like that nigga girl over there. Talk like this, nigga. Act like this, nigga. Do like this, nigga. And let me do this to you, niggas. Oh, you got smaller lips, nigga? I'm going to give you this position. You got a smaller nose, nigga? I'm going to give you that position. You're, you're short, nigga? You get that position. You tall, nigga? You get that position. Or you're a lighter skin, nigga? You get that position. You're a darker skin, nigga? You get that position. Imposing in us positions based on who we are in our faces 
and the various uniqueness of Africans in our faces, in our faces and imposing on us. Talk like this. Think like this. Act like this, nigga. Making us into them. Socially engineering us into them. The nigga, which is a black man or black woman who thinks like a racist white man or white woman or the cracker in black face or the nigger peeing the science of that. So this is the origins and base of how we are, the way that we are towards each other. So on the plantation, any black African who would have good, 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 good character, any black African who was charismatic amongst other Africans to be looked up to, the enemies played slick and they would target these Africans and give them certain positions over other Africans who may have even did more than they did. They would take different groups of Africans and do the same thing and make and say certain things in front of them. And as a matter of fact, deputize them to do certain things to other Africans in front of other Africans. So what this did is traumatically impose on us this aggressive, racial, abnormal, so-called competitiveness where we were not just competitive but ready to pull that one down to get the rewards that that one had turning us into crabs or what they call crabbing crabs in a barrel mindset starting with the base of who and how we are what we are in this condition so let me start dealing with some of the other things we cover the traumatic black obtrusive negro pain pathological Jealousy Disorder, you can get that in the archives at www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash Revolutionary Black Panther Party, www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash Revolutionary Panther Party. Or you can find it on YouTube, should be titled Dr. Ali Muhammad MD Breaks Down Origins of Black Self-Hatred, something to that effect. So we covered that last week. Now, a corollary of the traumatic black African Holocaust disorder is the traumatic black obtrusive Negro peeing crab in a barrel disorder. But let's start dealing with some information regarding that. Some of you don't understand how deep and how serious this is, and you should be taking note. According to Albert Shanker, who was then president for the United Federation of Teachers in the New York Times, June 19, 1994, in an article entitled The Crab Bucket Syndrome was the, the title of the article. In the article, he states that the crab bucket syndrome refers to black children who are doing their best, trying to escape hard life, gangs, drugs, and doing their best to be great, but are pulled down or pulled back into the bucket, pulled back into the bucket by those who are not working that hard, those who are not doing their best, but who want to bring them down or grab them down to get what they have or to get ahead of them. Moving right along. According to Psychology Today, Psychology Today, March 21st, 2011, Black medical doctor, Dr. Melody T. McLeod, MD, states in Psychology Today, in an article entitled, Crabs and a Barrel Syndrome, Will It Ever End? That's the title. Undertitle, don't crawl over and compete, instead celebrate each other. March 11, 2011. She states, haters, do you know some people who just can't celebrate when someone else is doing good things? People who don't want to see anyone else be celebrated for their good deeds or even for just looking good. As a physician, she states, as a physician, she states, listen clearly, as a physician, she states, she's an obstetrician, gynecologist, OBGYN. She states, I add to the conversation by presenting how such negative imagery, low marriage statistics, social rejection, often disrespect and the educational or work inequity with many black men Plus, or plus already present medical challenges, including the risk of HIV AIDS down low men and more can and mostly does have a negative effect on our physical health that she includes that in the question and in the topic. 
She says that when I first joined social media and this particular social network, I asked another black female physician and author, another black female physician and author, she asked, she says, who, uh, who also does national TV segments. She said that she asked if she'd be kind enough, kind enough now to simply post word of her new book on her page, just on her page. Ain't, ain't nothing, nothing more, nothing less on her page. She says she asked her that. For it is the first black woman's health book written by a physician in eight years. Her book. And no one else really gives voice to black women's specific health concerns and challenges. She continues to say, plus I have great endorsements from the medical, psychological, educational, and celebrity world. The forward is by... Pauletta Washington, and she calls her the beautiful wife of Academy Award winner Denzel Washington. So Denzel Washington's wife. She says her colleague replies, congratulations on your book. Wouldn't like, you know, just really what I congratulations on your book. Poof. And that was it. Like she ain't, she ain't put nothing there. She ain't doing nothing. Now, according to Professor Carlos Miller, January 2015 in the work entitled A an analysis of the crab and the barrel syndrome. Professor Miller states, this work, this paper empirically explores the existence, nature, and definition of the crabs and the barrel syndrome, a metaphor used to describe the mentality and behavior of individuals belong to or identifying with the particular community or culture who hold each other back from various opportunities for advancement and achievement, despite incentives and expectations for collaboration, combining two quality approaches, two quality approaches. In essence, Dr. Miller goes on to state, I identify the essence in the crab and barrel syndrome and define the competitive motivation for individuals to defy group norms and the structural influence that enables negative competition dynamics within groups. Also further states, this study also identifies variables for future theorizing of workplace competition within minority groups. Future research directions are discussed. And also Dr. Miller has a study called the Crabs in the Barrel Syndrome, Structural Influence on Competitive Behavior. That is January 2014. The other was 2015. Moving right along. So now let's deal with it now. Let's deal with it. The diagnosis that I have for you all tonight. The traumatic black obtrusive Negro pen crab in a barrel disorder, which is a corollary of the traumatic black obtrusive negro pen pathological jealousy disorder that we actually discussed last week. There are 43 traits of the traumatic black obtrusive negro pen crab in a barrel disorder. 43 traits. What are the 43 traits? Let's deal with trait number one. Trait number one. They see other black people, groups, organizations, Militaries, families, churches, mosques, temples, institutions, houses, children, parents, etc. as objects, either in their way or as stepping stones for them to reach the top of the barrel, to reach the top of the barrel and their path to the top. Number two, they will do anything. To get over on another black person, no matter what that anything could be. To get over on another black person, group, organization, military, family, church, mosque, temple, institution, leadership, spouses, children, parents, no matter what it is, they have no barrier. It is no holds bar with them. And they're climb to reach the top of the barrel. Number three will without hesitation, 
without hesitation, without hesitation, kill, rob, rape, steal from, mark, bite, and destroy other black people because to them, black African life has no value has no value. So they will kill it, rape it, rob it, mark it, bite it, do whatever intentionally in their climb to be ahead or gain. They see black people only as gain, as other crabs who are less important to them, who are either where they need to be or near the top in their way to the top, and they will do anything to get it. It doesn't matter how. And it doesn't matter if the robbery will affect, if the rape will affect, if the murder will affect, if the mimicking or the mocking or the plagiarism or the attacking will affect or damage the other black person or group, organization, uh, whatever it may be that they encounter. It doesn't matter to them how they how the group looks or how whom they affected is. Don't matter to them. It doesn't matter to them what effect they have in order to get ahead. They'll do anything to get ahead. Because none of their intentions was real in the first place. It is only a stage, a show, a gimmick. To get ahead or to sustain their ideas, desires, and wants. Number four of the traits of the traumatic black, the traumatic black obtrusive Negro peeing crab in a barrel disorder. Number four has a crab mentality, always ready to grab the other black person, groups, organizations, military, families, churches, mars, temples, institution, leadership, spouse, children, or parents, whomever they come in contact with always are ready to grab them grab them pull them down in order to take their place their spot their position even if they are not qualified to do so number five they will join intentionally now join what what their agenda ahead of it join groups organization militaries families, mosques, temples, institutions, amongst leadership, and even form relationships with other black people in order to get ahead of them, in order to, to, for the most part, in the case of a spouse, they do it to get something out of them, to take them to the top. In the case of a child, they'll use them, use their youth, if it's a little girl, sometimes you have one of those sick, twisted mothers that will exploit her daughter's youth and beauty. Exploit her youth and beauty in order to gain from her. Send her daughter out with older men. And kind of girls can be like 13, 15, 16, 17 years old. They're like, he look like he got money, girl. Sometimes they could be 20, 30, and whatever other age. He look like sending their children out. If it's a black male, send him out. Get him involved in or, or at least condone illegal activities that he's doing. Sick black men and sick black women do this with their children. Moving right along. Exploit their youth. However, if it's a group, they're doing it too. If it is a group, to, they'll first try to get close to the leadership. Here's how they do it. They get close enough. They do not mind being side by side as long as they can get the joint shine. However, they are toxic. So when the leadership or group or spouse or child or whomever it is they come in contact with does not abide by their wants or desires, they tear them down and sabotage all efforts regardless of where or who it is. Because they are, number six, they are constantly on the prowl, targeting and plotting. They never truly, they, they, they never truly made much of themselves in their life because they're too busy plotting or mimicking or mocking 
or usurping or tearing down. So they truly have no originality, no originality at all. Everything about them is someone else's. Their life story is somebody else's story. Their conversation is somebody else's conversation. Their colloquial language is someone else's language. The terms they use, the words they make, their, their other stories is somebody else's story. They are experts at biting, experts at plagiarizing, experts at mimicking and stealing the personality, profile, character, names, titles, and organizations and platforms of other black people. They will join groups in order to do so. If the group is named United African People's Movement, they will seek to supplant the leadership. When that doesn't work, they will mimic and bite. So if the group's actual name is United African People's Movement, they'll run around and call their group the Collided African People's Movement. They have no originality. Um, you have to be careful of these types around you because their intentions are never real. Their intentions are never real. They are only there to usurp, to divide while claiming unity. But they really are there to infiltrate, supplant, then disrupt and mimic. Crabbing, 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 not grabbing, but crabbing their way into a mimic or mock spot position group or organization. Though some of them get a little clever, some of them do, and they have to, though they totally usurp the entire platform to perpetrate it as their own, but this does not come without assaulting, attacking, slandering the former person they was in a relationship with, the former group they were involved with, or the former place. If it is a man a man to a woman, he's always going to say she's some kind of hoe. If it's a woman to a man, she's going to say he's some kind of whoremonger. And they gonna, and either one who's doing it would do that. And if it's a person who left the group, they have all kind of negative things to say. And the whole point is their agenda was what it was from the beginning. Here's the issue. This is now I want y'all to take note of this. Listen to this carefully because you have these people in your groups. You've had these people in your family. You've had these people in relationships with you. And they do a lot of, at least they try to do a lot of damage. But a true revolutionary and a strong person, I don't even phase them. They just take it as an example and lesson learned. But moving right along, moving right along, here's the most important thing. Here's the issue. The issue is this. Now listen carefully to how deep it is now. Here is the actual issue. And the issue is, if you have a problem with someone that is legit and you were once with them, then you leave them. It's over. Leave them the hell alone. If you feel how you feel and your allegations are true, you do move on. That's what normal people do. But people with this condition, they're different. They slander, they gossip, they roma, they lie, character assassinate, have allegations because their whole agenda from the beginning was based on hating and supplanting, usurping and biting. They mimic the names after they do the hatred and the slander, the lingos, the ranks, the titles, the places, the platforms, the ideology, the doctrine. They mimic because in truth, it is not based on any truth. That's the truth. Their agenda from the beginning was to do what they do because of the condition that they have. Because of their condition. In truth, it is based on a pathological jealousy, envy, self-hatred, crab in a barrel mentality. In essence, they really just want to be that person. They really just want to be with the group, the Timur, the Moss, the other person, the, the child or the elder or the parent or whomever it is they're doing it to is. That's, that's really what it is. And in essence, their reason for doing so becomes obvious. 
people with this condition family and this behavior are those who tore down and crab the honorable Marcus Mosiah God. Yes, they did. Tore down and crab noble Juali. Tore down and crab the honorable Elijah Muhammad in the party in the 60s all the way to the 80s. Tore down and crab Baba Fred Hampton Sr. Tore down and crab Mark Clark, Bunchy Carter, Eldridge Cleaver, Kwame Torre, Malcolm X, and Huey P. Newton. I'll say to all of them. But these people tore them down, fabricated things against them, and crabbed their way into positions, and even created their own fringe or splinter groups or factions, or the disruption, the slander, the character assassination, and lies against the groups, its leaders. Most of what either led to the assassination or incarceration, isolation, or deportation of the group and its leader or the targeted person. These people, they are pathologically opportunists. Even if they are agents, it is based on the issue and the disorder that they actually have. But as opportunists, they seized an opportunity. Let me explain real quick the difference between an opportunist and an operative. An operative is a person who's paid to do what they do. An opportunist is a person that either takes advantage of an opportunity, creates an opportunity, or seizes an opportunity and carries out the same behavior as an agent, but of course, I mean, as an operative, but they're an opportunist. Uh, moving right along. They can't wait for an opportunity to carry out their agenda. Number seven, does not see any importance or value in anyone or anything. They only see themselves as important, but subjective, I mean, it's very subjective. Eight, does not care about anything or anyone black except for themselves, and that is also subjective. Nine, they would join, befriend, or get into relationships or involved with groups. For the motives of usurping or supplanting or overthrowing or creating a coup. Regardless of who it is, these types, they have to be. They always are opportunists. Because being opportunists, they also make for the enemy good operatives. And when an opportunist, they either came in for the opportunity or they ceased the opportunity at the so-called right time. Number 10. Does not respect anything or anyone black, no matter who they are. No one is left off the hook from their behavior. They will disrespect, embarrass anyone, whether it's their parents, their child, their group, their past. They don't, it, it makes no difference. Their leader, the general, the chiefs, the imam, it don't matter who it is. It makes no difference. The only thing that matters is them, is their gains or how they can get over on the other brother or sister or a collective group of people, no matter who it is, in order to get to the top of the barrel. Number 11 family does not have any long-term relationships. They don't, but a series of short ones where everyone else is to blame. No matter if it was obvious, they were the problem. The relationship with them is never mutual. They usually use the person until there is no more to use. They are toxic. For example, they will use a person out of their house, out of their home. They'll use a person out of their car, run your car into the ground. Run your car into the ground of your time, of your expenses. Run that into the ground and have no concern about using you. They will continue and will leave you where everything they use and suck you dry without any regard for using you. They see themselves as entitled and only get around in order to crab and pull you down to bring themselves to the top. Number 13, D. Cannot see the progress 
of others as something good. They can't see the progress of other black people as something good. They can't. They must always try to get involved in, in the progress. Use it to their advantage and try to overtake it. And when that doesn't work, they will seek to overthrow. This starts with the uses of gossip, Roma, character assassination, lies, deceit. This behavior with them is usually carried out from the beginning because you really don't know. That when they when they came in from the beginning, they started whispering in people's ears and making little clicks and started tearing people down and doing different things in order to destroy. Moving right along. So they come in and they are overthrow, use gossip, rumor, character assassination, lies and deceit. This behavior with them is usually again carried out from the beginning. They form underground cliques. Yes, they do, family. Underground cliques in your organizations, in your militaries, in your churches, in your mosques, in your temples, in your little friend, friend crew that you got. They form little cliques within a clique. Even if they ain't a clique, they form a clique within a clique. In your communities. <laughs> These are the things they do in relationships in order to have a clique of crabs involved in their activities. People with these traits also gravitate towards each other. Like they say, birds of a feather flock together and crabs are the same grip. Goddamn had the same slips. They do it all together with each other. They plot together and even build off each other's madness. This is how they do it. This is how they do it. And Black Power, the brother, Black Lion, who is watching who was watching, when you get an opportunity, brother, you call me Black Lion. Black Lion, I'm not going to say his entire name, but he's a bold revolutionary himself. He's also an international artist. Uh, international artist, like artist artist, like not like toying around with that. Um, his mother's a bold artist. Um, uh, she is the queen of reggae music, and he oh, is no. uh, our ambassador. I hope everything's good and safe with you, but give me a call there, brother. And you hear me um, boast about this same Dr. Frazier. Well, that's his his father, in essence, extended in the context of it. Revolutionary love there. Black uh, brother Black Lion, the chemist, moving right He's along. Tonight, okay. Black Power, mm -hmm. moving right along. I'm at number 14. We'll only see other black people as targets as or obstacles in the way of their path to climb up. And if they encounter a group or organization, militaries, families, mosques, temples, institutions, leadership, spouses, or children, they do it so they can fester, infiltrate, or leech to get to the top of the barrel in that path that they so seek. 15, they see black people as targets for their goals, objectives to get ahead. Not, and their communication in essence is never sincere. Never. They have the ability to seem and appear sincere, but it is only because their disorder and agenda and their entire purpose is a ploy from the beginning. So they have gained mastery over petty forms of manipulation, which usually is later exposed. I mean, they can't go on forever. Number 16, cannot tolerate not being seen or heard because to them, any chance they are not seen, heard, or answered means that they are not in a position to achieve their path of climbing to the top of the barrel. And they'll do anything to destroy, sabotage, slander, malign, gossip upon any group any person who they feel does not answer their desire, especially when it involves going after another person. <laughs> Moving right along. Has a refusal to allow any other person besides themselves succeed. They feel that success of others is an obstacle in their way. 
They will for a period of time live or walk in the so-called shadows of others. But it is all intentional until they reach the so-called right opportunity to act out or to carry out their agenda. They are even willing to risk their own time, money, reputation. Even if it means them not being seen in a good light for a minute, as long as they are succeeding over the target. Or what they think is part and parcel of their path to climb to the top. They're okay. And for those of you who are just checking in, we're covering the traits of the traumatic black obtrusive Negro peeing. I'm sorry, traumatic black obtrusive Negro peeing crab in a barrel mentality that black people have as a result of our Holocaust. One more time. The traumatic black obtrusive Negro peeing crab in a barrel mentality that we have as a result of our Holocaust recovering the traits. And we are on trait number 18. We'll always tear down, steal, bite, target, hate, or slander other black groups, organizations, militaries, families, churches, mosques, temples, institutions, spouses, children, parents. No one's off the hook. Especially those of whom they were once affiliated with. Because they feel if they do not, if they do not, then everyone would actually look at them as the problem. So they make it their duty to create this actual propaganda. Sometimes it's usually behind the scenes in order to carry out their madness. Um, because they are the cause behind it, but of course they need to conceal. So they tear down and slander in order to dodge that which is inevitable. Moving right along. Number 19. They cannot be around you sincerely or be around you and sincerely applaud you for your good efforts. If they do give applause, it is only to get on your good side as a form of manipulation to carry out their agenda to climb to the top. I know you keep seeing my eyes go back and forth, but I'm trying to keep up <laughs> with, with the cameras and all of that. So that's why my eyes are going back and forth and moving up and doing all that other stuff. But moving right along, they totally hate the people they come in contact with. Because they feel people are obstacles, that black other black people are obstacles to them. And black groups are obstacles to them. They're the first who usually tell you um, before they realize that, at first, things ain't going for them. Well, I don't. I don't need no group. I'm my own person. I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. And they have these delusions and confusions. I'm. A, I'm my own person. I don't need no group. But I need with a group. When none of us came into the world by our goddamn selves, so we need some goddamn body. But they're the first to do that. And when that ain't working, or they find some place they could usurp. So moving right along, they totally hate black people. They hate. The people they come in contact with. They hate black people because they feel black people are obstacles and they will hate on you no matter what. No matter what you do for them, no matter who you are, they will hate on you. No matter what it is that you do, period, they're going to find a reason to hate. This is why when that whole debating thing crept into the conscious community, I was greatly, it had put a bad taste in my damn mouth because it helped to really, for the most part, prey on the ready issues that we have. We already got hate and hater issues, so it, it created more hate. Helped to create, I mean, I'm sorry, didn't create it. It exacerbated more hatred. It exacerbated hatred amongst us. Um, you, I don't know how your um, your camera um, went out. What? Yeah, it's, it's, it's out. Yours is out. What? And I, I guess it. I guess it's something you got to check um, where it's charging at. You probably should have tried to keep it. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> um, excuse me for one second. Use um, use mine. Yeah. Thank you. Mine is a little bit better, uh, but yours went out. So we got one. We got one camera down. We got one camera down, family, and it'll it'll be back up soon. I don't know um, what that's all about. For those of you that was listening on. On General Mina's 
um, we're going to be back up soon. And what I'm going to do is until she get back up, I'm going to elaborate on um, number 20. As they totally hate the people they come in contact with because they feel there are obstacles and will hate on you no matter what. Um, at times, um, you know, um, this is the thing about it. It won't matter what you do for them. Like I said, you could take them in. They could be on the street somewhere. You could um, use your vehicle to, to ride them all over town. You could go to work and give them your vehicle while you are at work. But it makes no difference what you do for them. They will always find a way to hate you because they hate you. And it's a real sad situation. It's very sad, but this is the problem with them. And I, what, what I'm trying to do is give the queen an opportunity um, to actually get that other camera back up because of the fact that, you know, we, um, we're we using um, multiple angles, multiple frames, and disseminating information to multiple places all at the same time. So that's why it's imperative and important. Now, how you look? Say it any more time. Uh, were, were, were you even charging at all? Yes, it was yeah, so I guess I think, I think it was charging. Think it, or it charged for a period of time, and, and then it, then it just it just yeah gave gave out. Uh, but be careful when you when you put it back how that goes now. But again, so we're dealing with um, number twenty um, as the queen is um, getting her um, um, her camera back up. Um, we're covering again the traumatic black obtrusive Negro pen crab in a barrel disorder. For those of you uh, who are listening, who are watching actually uh, on Facebook, you got 20 minutes to call in if you have anything that you'd like to express. Once this, once the actual broadcast is done for the night, you have 20 minutes to call in now. Um, if you're trying to get in to express yourselves, um, the number is 515-602-9696. That is 515-602-9696. Some of you have a different number. That is fine as well. Um, that number is 425-569-5164. That number there is 425-569-5164. But you can reach us again at 515-602-9696. Uh, how's everything looking for you? It's still, um, yeah, just let it just let it charge up. So in essence, um, you're going to try to use that? Yeah. Okay. So in essence, it's very important that we understand um, how serious things are because our conditions really, really tear our families apart. It tear our communities apart. And the problem is that we don't understand that we have a condition and that we have, sometimes we may say, oh, I heard this and that. But we don't understand that not only do we have a condition, we have conditions upon conditions upon conditions. And that's the issue at hand. And it is so important that we understand it because once we understand it, when we are then able to deal with it and to heal it, how are you looking? Oh, you know, it's the way. So you're going to use the um, computer? Yeah. All right. So you all um, give us a good opportunity. Um, I'm just letting the queen get situated. You know what I'm saying? Um, to, and again, for those of you who um, who are watching live, again, you will have an opportunity to express yourselves. Call 515-602-9696 or 425-569-5164. And you have about 20 minutes to do that now. Um, how's that going for you? I'm trying to see that. Okay, she's trying to get the device up and run. Y'all know how it is. We deal with this technology stuff today. And sometimes they like it flip on it. They just, this whole, I don't know what the hell it look like. They must have sent a special signal to your phone and zap the hell out your battery because I don't right, get it. Because all it was fresh. It didn't even say. Usually it, it say you know battery low, whatever. It just yeah. that nigga get out of here. But <laughs> <laughs> but um, how you look? That should be part three, right? Don't you have a part two already? Yeah, that should be part two. Y'all give me a second. Uh. uh yeah, don't you go nowhere. Give me one moment. I'm just trying to make sure she gets she gets up. What's going on? Okay. Um, all right. So you haven't you haven't started yet, right? Let me see. No, oh, that looks really like weird. Faded, yeah. But it's all good. Um, see about... Bring um <gasps> yeah, how bring much, that um. How much is this charger? Ah, uh, that my charger is great. You know, I it's use that. Not, not not that ten inch charger. No, this I'm talking about. 
Oh, that charger? Yeah. Oh. I don't, I don't like it. All right, so you all um, give us a second. Um, the charger ain't really gonna make no difference. Yeah. I can also it tell you it's not. It might. It's not. Because that charger is a very, very good charger. I charge everything. But y'all give us a second. I know y'all hear us discussing what we discuss it. But you know, if, if this came with your phone, then maybe, mm -hmm. maybe that's what it is. So let's see. So we're gonna see. So again, for those of you who may have um questions, again, it's best for you to call in to the number because um in about now 17 minutes minutes you won't be able to you won't be able to call in how that's looking you seem like it's going on. okay you won't be able to call in in like seven we can we can substitute i mean this look really horrible but i mean we could substitute like for a minute because like this don't look like it don't even have one percent <laughs> they don't so let's we can just use this for a minute so you can you can get back on yeah it, it really it really honestly don't look like um it's coming on so just whenever you're ready Let's utilize this so we can continue. Oh, yeah. And then when it comes on, we can just switch. Mm -hmm. So let's just do that. So we just getting everything back up. I do um apologize, but it ain't our faults. It's not us. All right, so we back up and y'all gotta forgive us for um for the bootleg because this is really like um <laughs> it got me speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Look at like your mouth moving slow. Yeah, my mouth is like like I'm in one of those uh, old Asian flicks. But anyways, um, so so let's get let's get rolling and let's get cracking. So um, continuing on uh, my topic. Uh, hopefully that is um charged pretty soon. So continuing the topic, and the topic is the traumatic black obtrusive Negro P and crabs in a barrel mentality, and we left off at number 20 we was at number 20 and um hopefully we're able to um to continue right now what we're doing is uh, is it up okay great so right now we're using a substitute device on the queens um i mean it's crazy it got me like i think i'm bruce lee right now it's got got my mouth i'm talking and my <laughs> lips are moving slower than my words are saying so you say bootleg, <laughs> and you might as well call that bootleg, yeah, but 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 it, it it is kind of bootleg. Oh, I did call it's it bootleg. Yeah, it, it's it's temporary, but um, but we getting there. So you getting ready to um get in there. So I'm gonna let her do that, and I'm gonna um continue. So number twenty, we're talking about um how they totally hate black people. They do. They hate. Any black person they come in contact with. Um, that's basically how they are. Um, where you at? What you got? It's oh, it is loading? Okay, good. So they ain't any black person they come in contact with. You know, with, with your relationship with them is never anything sincere. Again, we talked about how um, they are always, always, it is always a relationship that's one-sided when you're in a relationship with them. And for those of you who are listening on... Um, General Maynard's page, can you please let me know um, if you actually see what I see when I'm talking on there, that my lips are like moving slower than my words are going? If you could see that, uh, let me let me see you right. Yes. Uh, you say yes. Yeah, I don't know what that is. That's like, um, I have no idea why that's like that. But again, it's temporary. But, um, but as we were talking about the people with this condition, so their relationship with you is never sincere. Um, it is always a situation where it's one sided and um, and they misuse and abuse you. Um, and again, we're at number 20. Uh, where you at with it? You almost there? Mm -hmm. Oh, so she's almost back in. Uh, do you need me to log out of here for you? Oh, are you good? Well, she's all she's almost ready and she almost has it up. And I and again, like I said, I'm going to stay at, at number 20. I stay at number 20. Number 20. <laughs> why? Why? Yeah. We're almost there. OK. Okay. You got it? Almost, almost. Give me like one, one, like two seconds, and then it'll be up. Two seconds. It's two, it's two seconds. <laughs> that, that's one or two seconds. <laughs> Leave it alone, you know. Uh, you know you're I almost mean? there? Yes, almost, almost, almost. Okay. Okay, so you, you have it? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, uh, okay. Anyway, so um, I, mean, I might as well just close this one now, because this is really yeah, like an annoying me anyway. I can't even. Um, we're going to. I'll be back on that on that one. So you got to put that as number four when you get up because 
I, I don't. I had no idea um, what that one was trying to do and what it was trying to prove, but I finished it. So just put part four and we'll get started because for the sake of time, we need to um, move forward. We are. Um, we uh, for those of you again who um, who are. Okay. So, all right. Good. So we're back. Goodness. Wait. This is going out. All right. All right. So let's. Uh, so it's over with. So. Shit. I'm just gonna continue on my end. So, anyways, we're at number twenty. For those of you um, who are listening um, on the Queens page, you got to come to this area. It's um, A L I middle initial O Muhammad M U H M E D. So we're at number twenty, and number twenty states they totally hate the people they come in contact with, black people. That they hate us. Not only do they hate the black people they come in contact with, but they hate us because they feel, they clearly feel. As as a race and people, not just you personally, but it's extended to the entire race. They clearly feel that that we are obstacles and on a personal dynamic that you are an obstacle and they will hate you no matter what. No matter what, they will hate you. No matter what, they'll hate you. They'll form a relationship with you. They'll join your groups. And no matter what, again, they will hate you no matter what you do for them. And what they do is they come around you, join your groups, do what they do only to get close to you in order to take what you have, to rob, to mimic. And if that doesn't work, they sabotage. That's their next move, the sabotage. And their sabotage is so notorious because it's a plot from the very beginning. That it's a plot from the very beginning. Yo, her video ain't showing anymore, General Magenta, because we cut that video off and we we trying to do something, but I but hopefully that works. But for those of you um who are who are listening on that end, um um she actually um it actually is being shared to her page, at least to my understanding. But moving right along. So they totally hate you. Um and that, and their agenda is to rob you, to mimic, and if that doesn't work. Sabotage is their next moves. And for those of you who have questions, again, you're going to have to call in 515-622-9696 because you got about 10 minutes to do so. You have any questions? Uh, moving right along to mimic. Um, they are those who cannot do anything except hate on you. They hate us. They are haters, either to your face or behind your back. When they hate behind your back, they smile in your face. All the time, they want to take your place. That's what I'm talking about. They want to take your place, showing fake love straight up to your face. Straight up to your face. That's how they are. 21. They'll make sure that that they present themselves in a special way to the people. Black groups, organizations, militaries, families, churches, mosques, temples, institutions, leadership around the spouse or children or parents, or whomever they're around, they exaggerate their own importance. For example, they join the group and let's say you teach them to organize. That is, again, you teach them to organize and that's the theme of your group, organizing. How you, how you looking? I mean, if it's sideways or sideways, we're going to get it cracking because I don't know what's going on. So how you looking? It's live? Mm -hmm. oh, so you back up? So General Mena is back up. She's back up, back up and running. Uh, whatever we got to do, it's going to be sideways. It's going to be sideways. Whatever. You cannot turn. Oh, I know why. Are you going to set it up? Mm -hmm. See, that's the other thing, too. We're moving right along. So I am on number 21 um, for those of you. Um, So yours is on, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So. For those of you listening, um, I'm on number 21. Um, we went past number 20. I was trying to give y'all some time on that end over there um, to pick up. But um, as I see, in essence, um, well, we're good. We're back up here. Um, rotate. Try it. See what it works. Whatever. Very good. All right. Very good. Thank, thank you, General, General Staggers. Black Power. So moving right along. So in essence, so let's deal with it now. We were at number 20, dealing with the fact that they are haters no matter what they will always hate. No matter what they will always say. No matter what you give them. No matter what you do for them. No matter what they will always hate on you. 
That is their duty. Their duty, they make it their duty. Their goal and objective is to hate on you. That's what they do. They hate. They make it their duty to hate on you. That's what they do. They hate. They hate, they hate, they hate, they hate, they hate. So that is number 20. No matter what it is. They form relationships. They befriend you. They join your groups. But it's always a motive to take what you got to rob, to mimic, to hate. We're on number 21. And we're not going back no more to number 20. Number 21. They'll make sure that they present themselves in a special way to black groups, organizations, the militaries, the families, churches, spouses, leadership, parents, whomever. They come in contact with. They exaggerate their own importance. For example, if they join the group and let's say you teach them, as I was covering, to organize. And that's the thing with your group. They then soak it all up. And their exaggerations, they start exaggerating, you know, after you didn't tell them everything. A little time later, they say, oh, man, I, 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 I was organized. But you remember when they didn't even know what organizing was. Or they leave you or your group and claim they are organizers. Yeah, my family were organizers. You know, uh, uh, too, too, too much of them died organizing. So I'm going to be a, a legend organizer or going to create heroic organizer coalition. And it's usually the case where it has a connection to your group. For example, if your group is called the National Organizer Coalition, they usurp, they will mimic, they will bite. As the weak, insufficient, uncreative, unoriginal person that they are and call themselves the Heroic Organizer Coalition. Again, their relationship with black people is a parasitic one, which they soak off and leech off. They will even spend time, energy, materials to do so for their agenda. Everything they do is an agenda. Everything they do is an agenda. No matter how good it appears. No matter how good it appears. Everything they do has a motive to it. It can appear like the best thing. You can see somebody losing their life and it looked like they gave them some life. If you can see a, a homeless baby and mother and look like they did something for them. And it looks so benevolent. It looks so great. It looks so significant. But the only sad part is, for them, it is an agenda. For them, it is an agenda. Everything they do is an agenda. They'll spend time and materials to do so just for their agenda. Again, everything they do is an agenda, no matter how good it appears. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled at all. Even what seems to be good with them, again, is an agenda. They can do activities, again, do activities that look good for the people. Even if it's just, you know, let's say, for instance, um, them housing somebody. But it's all a ruse and sometimes a noose. An overall agenda and a chance for them just to crab the people's attention, crab the people's energy, confuse the people, rob them of their time and their agenda to climb up over them. And it is usually via ideas that they stole in order to use as a tool to climb with. For example, if you have a group and your group provides free schools sincerely to the people, they will bite your group. And then provide free schools insincerely to the people. Because it is a ploy for their agenda. But that is people, of course, with this condition. That is people, of course, um, with this condition. Moving um, right along. We want you to, to really understand that you got about six minutes um, to, get, to get on. You actually have six minutes to get on. It's area code 515-612. 9696, you have six minutes to get on. So for those of you who want to call in, um, please do so um, at this particular time. So I'm going to give you that opportunity. You have six minutes to get on. Again, um, that's at area code uh, 515 
602-9696. So again, we want you to understand that. It's very imperative that that you get um, get yourself situated, you get yourself together. And let me see, I just I just saw something real strange. And so I'm looking and I'm just looking. As you be on it and you have these um um what you call them, them subversive um white folks who'll come on and just start doing all kind of uh crazy stuff. So let me see something right quick. Um uh, right now uh so that we don't have any kind of disruptions because um part of the reason why we even have to deal with the issue the way that we do uh, and what we had to do tonight is because of the fact of how they target us. They target us so hard and um, they attack us so hard that we always have to find a way to be uh, resilient with our works and also we have to find a way to be able to prevail over anything that they do against us. So that's basically where we are. Uh, moving right along. If you want to express yourself, you got five minutes now. I'm telling y'all. Now you're going to feel real bad when you don't have any, when you can't express yourself. You're going to feel really, really upset if you can't express yourself. The number is 515 6029696. I'm telling you to call in because you got five minutes to do. After that five minutes, you won't be able to call in. You won't be able to. So I'm just, providing a chance and opportunity because uh, whenever we uh, we deal with information, the information um, in and of itself, um, honestly, uh, for the most part, for the most part, for the most part, the information in and of itself is nothing if the people ain't involved. So we want the people to be involved. I mean, it's going to come back just... No, uh, Oh, this they gonna call you because your thing keep going. I don't know what I don't know what <laughs> your device is doing. I don't know what it's doing. You gotta just sneeze, go ahead and sneeze. But moving right along, so we were dealing um, with number um twenty one. So this is the things that they do, and again um they'll even spend time and materials to do so for their agenda. Everything with them is agenda. No matter how it looks, they can do activities again, but it's a ruse. It's a noose at times too. Moving right along. Number 22, number 22, 22. In their own desires, they see the objects of their desires and wants amongst black groups, organizations, militaries, families, churches, mosques, temples, institutions, leadership, spouses, and children, anyone they come in contact with, they see them as targets, not as companions, not as friends, but as targets. So again, they see them as targets. They don't see them as anyone who is their equals. To them, that is a target. To them, it is not. It is inhuman. So they dehumanize that which they come in contact with. Uh, moving right along, and moving strong. And I don't know what this is, but um, let me get to it. Okay, very good. I just had to, to make some adjustments. Okay, so we black at it. So again, so they see again you not as human. They don't see your group as something of value, but they see you again as a target in their own desires or of their own desires or objects of their own desires. They see you not as companions, not as confidants, I mean, not as comrades, I mean. And they don't see you the same way they see themselves. So they approach you or approach the group. Your thing is cutting off again. They approach you or approach the groups or people, not as themselves. That's okay. Um, they approach with you or the group. Their preoccupation is of their own personalized fantasies of success, heroic stories, Superman fairy tales. And for power, beauty, intelligence, and even um, ideal romance, that's another thing they, they be on um, when they come after you. But it, again, it's for their own agenda. They do not believe that other black people or groups are equals. They believe that they are special and only can be understood by other special people. Or, or other specials. So you got 90 seconds to call in. 
515-602-9696. So again, they do not believe that that black people or groups, black groups are their equals. They believe, again, that they are special and can only be understood by other special people or institutions that, of course, accept their agenda, their lies, their delusions as if it is a reality. And they usually click together. They usually click together with like minded people because they feed off each other. Twenty three. Cannot allow a moment where attention is given to another to go without them being involved. This seriously bothers them in their climb. Seriously bothers them. They may utter as a diversion to throw others off. This is what they do to throw onlookers off. They'll say, hey, I'm not in it for the spotlight. You know what I'm saying? I'm not in it for that. You know, I'm not in it for the spotlight. I'm in it for the spotlight. I'm in it for who always running up to the pictures and the videos and the radios, run up on it. Even if they're not given approval to do so. Even if they're not given approval to do so. You got 515-622-9696, but it's almost over. Uh, moving right along. Even if they, again, don't have approval to do so, they'll do that. Just, just, do, what, just do what they do. They will always do anything to seize the opportunity, even if it means they get in trouble. They are even jealous of those who do get the attention while they are receiving it, of course. In their condition to climb, they require constant attention and admiration from others in their path as they try to climb to the top of the barrel. Number 24. They always take advantage of other black people, groups, organizations, militaries, families, churches, mosques, temples, institutions, leadership, spouses, and children, regardless of who or what, to reach their own goals. They have absolutely no feelings for other black people, for other black groups, regardless of who. And lack empathy. They will only pretend to have it though. To have some regard or to have some empathy. In their agenda. But this is not sincere. And this is why they begin to sabotage. From the beginning. And begin their sabotage campaigns. It usually. And this is why their sabotage campaigns usually shock the hell out of people. Because they saying like they were so sincere. They was always the first one there. First one to leave, last one to go. The one, you want me to do that? Let me do that. Overreach and all of that stuff. But in essence, in essence, it usually shocks the black person or group or victims in these people's climb to the top of the barrel. 26. They are often envious of the black people, whether it's group or organization, child, family, it makes no difference. And may at times delusionally believe that others are envious of them. 27. They are often void of humility unless they have to and it is there and to their advantage. Other than that, they show arrogant behavior and attitudes. And because they're always plotting on others in their climb, they usually suspect without sufficient basis that others are exploiting, plotting to harm them or deceiving them. Moving right along, we had number 28. What, number 28, uh, wait, we were at number 27. Yeah, now we're at number 28. They're always, wait, yeah, plotting on others in their climb. They are usually preoccupied with unjustified doubts about the loyalty or trustworthiness of friends or associates of whom they have no loyalty in the first place. 29, they usually plot on others to get misinformation or to exploit their life and situations, or to create lies and slander to use later, like the agent who spies with hidden cameras and recorders, or like COINTELPRO that creates and manipulates such devices. They carry out this kind of behavior in their schemes because they are usually reluctant to confide in others 
because of unwarranted fear that the information will be used maliciously against them because they're always plotting. Number 30, does not end issues, but persistently bears grudges, does not move on, but are engulfed in insults, injuries, and slights. 31, plots on others and while doing so, make up or perceive attacks on their person that are not apparent to others and are so quick to react angrily or to counteract will also create schemes to turn people against each other, especially in the matter of the opposite gender or the gender if their persuasion is in that context, which is um, to climb up to the top with a trophy husband or trophy boyfriend or trophy girlfriend or trophy wife. It is always also a symbol of the top, which is usually why they either choose the ideal male or female so they can show, hey, I'm at the top. This is my trophy. Some of them are even homosexual. But in order to achieve their climb without scrutiny, they, they do that. Moving right along. Number 32. Cannot have a functional relationship. Because the black group or person is their target. And when it comes to sexual relationships, they are flooded with recurrent suspicions without justification. Regarding fidelity of the spouse or sexual partner, when it comes to the group organization, they are always without justification regarding plans of the group kicking them out or concerned with their positions or or what their standing is in the group just for just randomly. Thirty three. They usually never tell the truth. They are usually lying and is usually pathological. But even when the truth can be a choice, they will always lie because to tell the truth means that they are vulnerable or humanizing you. When to them, you are just an object in the barrel, another crab that's in their way and they're climbing from the top. 34. They are risk takers. Risk takers. That's what they are. Who have no inhibition. And usually are irresponsible about very important things. For example, they will have an encounter with a random person, sexual encounter, even if someone is selling it to them and will go about it in an unprotected fashion because they have no discretion in this area and assume that the person is just another target, even if they are spending money. So disease, HIV, syphilis, herpes, gonorrhea, trick and STDs and other contagions are typical for them because they will take risk. They will take risk and have no inhibitions, no inhibitions. We're back live on the other feed. They'll take risk and have no inhibitions while doing it. And they'll climb to the top of the barrel. Number 35, number 35. We're on number 35, number 35. They are very manipulative. And for those of you who are just coming in, we're dealing with a traumatic black obtrusive, Negro peer, crab, and a barrel disorder. Moving right along. They are, we're at number 35, by the way. They are very manipulative and usually feel out their targets. If it is someone who's in charge or something um, that they can manipulate in that particular context, they become fake yes men and Fake yes, women. Do you need this, sir? Do you need that, sir? Hey, yes, sir. And, you know, all that other stuff who appear to be overreaching or going all out for them. And for many groups and leadership, good help is hard to find. And this is in essence, if it is someone who's on the same title with them, though, they manipulate them with their fairy tales and their stories of themselves and their connection to stardom. Fame and sometimes these people themselves also want to be actors, actresses, singers, rappers, dancers, not because they have talent. I'm talking about they ain't even got the talent, but you know, they, 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 I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but they'll do something and you could just laugh at them. And then you have some people who do have talent and don't do that behavior. A lot of our people have talent. We're talking about the ones who don't, just to be saying, and it's almost laughable, but don't mark nobody. Not because they have any real talent. But because it's a place at the top and in their mimicry, 
They find a famous actor, actress, rapper, singer, or celebrity to mimic or create a false comparison to their life in a pursuit to climb to the top. 36. Their lack of emotion is something serious. With them, any appearance of emotion is based on gain. To gain your trust, to gain your position, and I don't care what kind of fake uh, wannabe white supremacist Spaniard you got you on, but let me get this person the hell out of here. Let me see who you you, uh, you could, I don't know <laughs> what they are. Um, but I'm going to tell you in a minute, adios is, is what you're about to get. I see who you are. And I'm not even gonna um gonna deal with you because I don't know what the heck you writing. But I hope I hope it ain't nothing bad. And I, I tell you what, um I'm a, if you chill for a minute and, and let me um okay, all right. Cause you look darker than me, so I, I, I maybe it's something in support, so I'm gonna just leave it alone. If you want to donate, you can go to www.therevolutionaryblackpantherparty.org, um, Brother Garvey. That's www.therevolutionaryblackpantherparty.org, www.therevolutionaryblackpantherparty.org. And you can go to where it says to join. And on that page, it's going to say make a difference. You go to the bottom, you'll see something where it says donate, and that's how you can donate, brother. www.therevolutionaryblackpantherparty.org. Click on the part where it says to join. And scroll down to the bottom and you'll be able to donate, Brother Gavi. And thanks for asking. Moving right along um, um, without dealing with this interruption with that person writing in. If, um, black power to you, brother. To Brother Sila. Okay, black power. Uh, moving right along. So their lack of emotion um, is serious. And with them, any appearance of emotion, again, is based on gain. Either to gain your trust, position, or something. From you as a target in their path to climb to the top. We're at number 37 and we're almost there. They are typically unstable, are either excessively happy or angry, irritated mood, but may hide if it is someone whom has power or position they need or over them as their target to either usurp that position or get to the top of the barrel. I mean, to get to the top of the barrel. 38, they usually, now listen carefully. <clears throat> This is most important, and this is ways that you can actually, you're welcome, Brother Garvey. Um, this is a way you can actually, actually, for the most part, see where or why some people act a certain way, the traits. And this is why we're going through traits. Here's one of their traits. They usually have speaking problems, which range from a serious lisp, the <laughs> serious lisp, <laughs> A serious lisp to talking very fast, like blah, 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 and they don't stop, and even stuttering. It may have underlying issues that cause them to froth out of their mouth, um, breathe weird, and be fidgety, shaky, and keep their eyes closed or always hold their head down. But a typical speaking issue for them is psychological, and is psychologically imposed, and 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 the issue. We're dealing with is this. So let's deal with it like this. Okay, let's get to the list. Not everybody with a list has a problem. Not saying that. Not everybody who stutters has an issue. Not everybody who's fidgety or who's shaky or who close their eyes and hold their head down is a problem. We're talking about them because the majority of stutterers do not have any psychological problems. Okay, so, so let's make that clear. Everyone who stutters don't have a problem. And everyone stutters a little in one way or another at times. So that's not the issue at all. But let's deal with some facts. According to the world-renowned speech pathologist, Dr. Van Ripper, according to the world-renowned speech pathologist, Dr. Van Ripper, who is really one of the fathers of developmental speech pathology, Dr. Van Ripper, in his work, The Treatment of Stuttering, 1973, stated that stuttering is a psychological issue for most stutterers. He stated that neurosis, when it is present, is usually the result of traumatic speaking experiences. 
These stutterers were miserable because they stuttered. But again, we're not talking about how everybody stutter got a problem. We're just talking about people with this trait, how they get down. Um, Dr. Ripper further states that the psychological problematic stutterer has a major issue because stuttering is like not having control of your own body, bodily functions, which is deeply rooted in their psychological issues and lack of self-control. They can't help themselves in some of their behavior. He goes on to state stuttering produces in the stutterer an experience of loss of control of his own body in an extraordinarily important situation. Interpersonal communication, the loss of control of one's body can lead to situations like those mentioned. Dr. Ripper concluded that some of the cases of psychological problematic stuttering is similar to that of dogs exposed to inescapable punishment. So just getting into the traumatic part. According to Minnesota State University, in an article, uh, you don't worry about it. All you keep getting emotions over your no, camera, all right? It's okay, man. I mean, <laughs> they mess with my stuff. It's okay. According to Minnesota State University, in an article entitled Psychological Problems in a Case of Stuttering by Jose Antonio Garcia and Huguera. Paragraph two. It states, stuttering may generate psychological problems which in turn may worsen speech. The situation to this type of problem is not always a direct consequence of improvement in speech. The application of cognitive behavior treatment techniques may be fundamental in obtaining better well-being in some cases. Now let's get to the point, other points I mean. According to Dr. Lynn Yvonne Abramson, professor in psychology at the University of Wisconsin-Madison in her work entitled Learned Helplessness in Humans, Critique and Reformulation in the Journal of Abnormal Psychology, pages 49 through 74. She states, stuttering has been considered as playing an important role in producing some type of psychological issue. In this particular case, also dealing with depression. In the case of the crab in a barrel mental disorder, the traumatic black obtrusive Negro pean crab in a barrel mental disorder, stuttering and of course lying, pathological lying, are some of the traits that may come along with it. Like when the elders say, you know what the elders tell us, when a person is stuttering, they can't be trusted. They up to something that they are lying. Slobbering out of their mouth. You know how the elders say that, you know, you can't, don't trust me, baby. That, 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 you can't trust him. Moving right along. But again, not all people who stutter are or have any kind of issues. We're just talking about those with the crab mentality or psychological disorder dealing with that particular mentality. Um, and it is a perfect identification of them having this condition. Of course, along with all the other traits, including their lies, plots, and behavior, they lie to plot. They lie and they plot so hard, even if their lies contradict each other. And many of the times they don't know whether they got caught. They just keep on going. Number 39. They are always plotting. And because they're always plotting, they know how to pretend and to be witty and charming. So they appear this way. But it is only to fulfill their agenda to climb to the top of the barrel. Number 40. They're always plotting and they are very good at flattery because they're always plotting and manipulating other people's emotion. They usually tend to disregard the safety of self and others. For example, they'll go to unsafe places or situations and return to their children or families or groups if they have them. Either one and they either bring diseases back or harm back, for example. These are the kind of people who would join a street tribe, a.k.a. gang, and then shoot at the opposition. Just bop, 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 go over to the other opposition, to the other so-called rivals, and they'll shoot. And then they'll turn back, return back to where their gang or tribe is. They don't tell anybody anything. And then they brought all kind of stuff to the door. But this is the traits of these people. Number 41, they'll never show guilt or remorse ever. And the closest they get is to themselves being a victim. 
If you see them appear to be apologetic, it's only a plot to take advantage of you and they climb to the top of the barrel. 42. They're often angry because usually all of their efforts to do what it is that they do, all of their efforts usually, usually fails. It looks good for them at first. But because they have lied, stole, cheated, created fantasies and have bitten or mimicked their position, have bitten or mimicked their way, it fails or falls eventually. Almost as soon as they created it sometimes, but sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but eventually it will because they align themselves in their scheme with those who are like them as well. And they usually have co-conspirators, co-snakes, and snakes eat other snakes. But like the wayward crab at the bottom of the barrel, they will always climb over, not just on you, but even on each other. They don't have loyalty. Like sometimes the saying that there's loyalty amongst thieves. Moving right along. They will never be a true friend, true member, spouse, or ally. Because within them is the rapacious desire to use all within their path as stepping stones to climb to the top of the barrel. So these are the 43 traits of the traumatic black obtrusive Negro peeing crab in a barrel disorder, which is a corollary of the traumatic black obtrusive Negro peeing pathological jealousy disorder, also known as the black internal self-hating jealousy disorder. Very important disorder to be diagnosed, very serious matter. So at this particular point in time, for those of you um, who have called in, the line is open for you. And I told some of y'all to call in. I've been saying it for a long time to call the number 515-602-9696. Been saying it over and over again. And some people got it. Some people call in and they got, I guess it don't sound, it don't sound good on, on I don't get it. On the just calling in, you got to see it. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's a different thing. Um, moving right along. And to Sister uh, Magenta, one thing you would note that whenever somebody has a psychological disorder, sometimes they have the, the problems of mix. Also, sometimes um, you will see traits similar in another thing. So with that particular disorder, we have all different kind of problems going on amongst our people. And when you go to the the major, give me one second. Sit there for a second. Give me a moment. Okay. Y'all give me one second. I'll be back. We'll be right back, everybody. And I'm trying to get my live back on on my end. Because for some reason, they keep kicking me offline. So I'm losing um, my live feed. So I'm getting that back together now. <laughs> your, live, your live feed is never going to come back. I don't understand why they keep... Oh, moving right along. I apologize about that, y'all. But anyway, getting back to it. So anyways, um, as I was saying, though, Sister Magenta, so we have what's known as the traumatic black obtrusive malignant narcissist disorder. A malignant narcissist. So this particular, when you deal with the base, the base of the traumatic black obtrusive pathological jealousy disorder, that's a corollary of the traumatic black obtrusive malignant narcissistic disorder. So that's a corollary of it. So this is also a corollary of that. So you're going to get, you know, s traits that are similar in other disorders. But always note when a person has a mental condition, they always have another underlying condition somewhere. But moving right along. But at this particular point in time, for those of you who've called in, it's good. You can press one at this particular time as well. For those of you who have called in, you can press one if you want to speak at this particular point in time. Again, you can press one and your questions um, will not be put aside. Um, you can press one at this particular point in time. And I told y'all to call in when it was time to call. I know y'all watching and you don't want to lose what you're watching. But if you have words that you would like to express, now would have been the time to call in. So at this particular point in time, I'm going to open the line. And for those of you who are watching, you can tone in. Same revolutionary time when usually we're an hour ahead. We usually start 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Now, we've been having a special time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. 
but it's usually 9 30 p.m. Eastern. And it's www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash revolutionary black panther party. www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash revolutionary black panther party. One more time. www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash revolutionary black panther party. That's www blogtalkradio.com forward slash revolutionary black panther party um it's how you can um get us and also catch the live feed um, from this page here i'll be here i guess for for the 30 days um on here um they try something else we got something for them too um it's a l i middle letter o m u h m m u h a m m a d muhammad or you can catch it on the queen's page as well you know either way uh, moving right along. So for those of you who have called in, I'm going to open the line for you. We got a caller from area code 323, last four digits 2961. Um, Black Power Caller, you are on. Black Power, 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 uh, can you try to speak up a little bit for me, good brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is John Taco calling out of L.A. Uh, uh, okay, okay. Hold on. You got uh, General Taco. I want you to start over because um, right here, this is an esteemed guest. For those of you who are listening, this is just like not any regular guest. This, this is an esteemed guest. This is the bold, dynamic, revolutionary general and leader of the Black Riders Liberation Party, and my comrade, General Taco. I, I want you to reintroduce yourself and announce yourself to the people. This is General Taco, the revolutionary leader, bold revolutionary general, the same general of the Black Riders Liberation Party. Black Power, General, go ahead and reintroduce yourself, General. Black Power, Black Power, all power to the people. This is General Taco calling out of LA from the Black Riders. Black power, all power to the people. Before you go, um, General Taco, before you go, um, a lot of the traits that we cover tonight, I know, like all of us um, who, ha who have been really selected by the people to serve the people, I know you yourself have experienced that, and I know you know people who have experienced that, and the thing about us as revolutionaries is that no matter what we experience, we know how to prevail and the to continue because the struggle continues. And um and I want the people to know the love that the Revolutionary Black Panther Party has for the Black Rider Liberation Party. This is one of our allies. This comrade here is a hard worker and been working hard to liberate our people. So I want them to know the love we have for you. And I guess you could express the love that you have for us as well, General Taco Shakur. Black power. Black power, brother. And all power to the people. Black power, black power. All power to the people. Yes, yes, sir. We have much love and we move in solidarity with the revolutionary Black Panther Party under the precious teachings of Dr. Ali. We move together with our God and our gun against the racist enemy, the white supremacy, capitalist, fascist state, and the racist heart regime. Black power, all power to the people. All power to the people and black power. You know, General Taco, before you go, and I'm not saying that just because we here, but... You are on my mind and heart, you know. Um, I was thinking about it, you know. Um, I was even talking to the deputy chief about it, and um, it's like you you called in, so it's. I mean, that's that that revolutionary. What you call that in psychology? We call that collective consciousness. So very powerful. I thank you, brother. Revolutionary love and love to you and the entire Black Rider Liberation Party, new generation of Panthers, and look forward to seeing you um sometime soon, dear brother. Revolutionary love and Black Power. All power to the people. Very good. So that was a very, 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 very um, 
great call. Um, for any other callers um, that would like to speak, I want you to do so at this time. Um, that brother, General Taco, is a bold, esteemed brother, and he's one of the one of those who are a leader of the people. Black Rider, Liberation Party, New Generation of Panthers. Love that brother. Love the work that the Black Riders do. And they are definitely our allies. And we are definitely their allies. Uh, moving forward, for those of you um, who are at this time interested in asking any questions or making any statements, um, do so at this particular time. I really wish a lot of you um, would have took heed um, you know, to that because of the fact that when I said, when I gave you the number to call in, because I know that you have questions. And um, I always, even when I was a youth, when I was a youth and I used to actually watch, uh, let's say like lectures or things like that, I knew that the lecture wasn't fulfilling enough or extensive enough if the audience weren't able to participate. If it's just a lecture or if it's just information, even though I'm breaking down psychological traits and disorders and and our next broadcast will be coming with the curatives and preventative. We're not just going to tell you the problem. We're going to give you the solution to fix the problem. One more time, we're not just going to tell you the problem. We're going to give you the solution to fix the problem. So um, in essence, um, if there is no dialogue, I used to always feel that, you know, I wasn't, uh, it wasn't sufficient enough. That's why it's always important that you yourselves um, get involved in that way. Um, if I had a second phone, um I would actually have you call that number, but being that, uh, as a matter of fact, I tell you what, uh, for those of you who want to, I'm going to tell you how you can actually get, you may be able to get through. I'm going to give you the number to the national hotline, and I probably can be able to get you in there if you want to, and I'm going to give you some time to do so. Um, I know that um, we have uh, went on pretty late tonight, so um, I will be giving you like probably about five minutes to do that. But I'm going to give you the number to the hotline and you can call that number. And I guarantee if you call that number, um, I'll make sure that I can call you into the line. So because I see your number pop up and I'll call you into the line. Um, the hotline number is 877-235-3318, 877-235-3318. If you call that number and press 1, I'll see your number and I'll call you in onto the line. Also, if you're not shy about... Um, your information uh, being over social media. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm looking here. I don't think I can actually um, actually can't call you in. The only thing I could do is do an extension. Um, so actually, at this point in time, nah, you stuck. I just saw it because it, it, it's past the hour, so there's no way for me to call you uh, call you in. So I actually can't do that. But um, but in that sense, um, I do thank each and every one of you for being as attentive as you have been. But I myself, um, again, um, it's always important and imperative that those who are listening speak. Those who are listening speak. Even if they come to speak with some type of conjecture, it's always important to have that because sometimes that person's conjecture can be the very thing you were thinking about too, but was only afraid to ask. So that's basically how that is. But again, um, tonight's topic and discussion was very heavy and very powerful. The topic was the origins of black people's crab in a barrel mentality. That is the topic for the night. Um, I thank those of you um, who um, who have watched us for this particular point in time. Um, what I will do is a quick um, after hour of all of this um, where I would ask the, the deputy chief if she would like to express herself about um, how she felt about the topic for the night. Because it was a very serious topic. So I would like um, right now um, for the deputy chief, let me, um, I don't know what just happened. Hey, hold on for a second. Let me get us back in on this end. Somehow um, we lost. All right, there we go. Give me one quick second, y'all. Uh, so I can make sure. Oh, yeah. They've been messing with my Facebook all night tonight. So you know how that goes. Yeah, that whole that thing is, is, is the weirdest <laughs> yeah. thing. That was just weird because they just completely knocked my whole yeah. phone off like three times. Yeah, that that was just like ridiculous, really, because this never happened before. It's like the fact that they blocked my Facebook page just blocked it. Like for what? You know, craziness. But um, no ex explanation. But so I want you to. Um, how did you feel about the um, about the broadcasting? Um, and you sitting still looking taller than me. Just I'm just, I'm not, I know that's out of chairs and I'm slouching. <laughs> That's all. Don't make me look so I know. Like 
Um, tonight was very powerful. I think it hit home for a lot of people. Um, I actually been speaking to people uh, recently that's been going through um, similar stuff like that in their relationships uh, with their partner. You know, basically they building up something with this person and then this person completely just stop caring and then just takes everything, take everything away from this person that they had. So it was like, it's hard when, when the person that you trust or the person that you love or the person that you work with does that to you because it really leaves the door open to not um, trust people anymore. So I think this hit home for a lot of people and a lot of people have dealt with these type of situations, especially with the crab and the bear thing. Um, I know we dealt with it in churches. I know I've come up in the church seeing um people old people beefing about crazy stuff like oh she stole money out the out the plate or the preacher ain't doing this right or the, you know the church not being ran right or he's sleeping with this person they sleeping with this person so it's it's a lot of that that we can relate to so i really think tonight was very important and i think um a lot of us can learn from what was said tonight and um as far as us doing what we're doing now we're doing this for not only our benefit your benefit as well um, you know, if we don't do it, then who will? So it's not time to be quiet. Everybody has a voice to express themselves with. Um, God gave us all the ability to um, have a heart to know and, and to know and to feel and to see what's, what's going on in the world now. So I feel that we all should just really get it together and stop being so afraid and stop and stop being so judgmental. You know what I'm saying? Don't it? Don't, it doesn't matter what you believe in. It doesn't matter. You know your beliefs and which how you think. It matters that what matters is we all have one goal and, and that one goal is to be unified and to unite and become one so we can build our nation state. And so we become one and we can fight against the enemy, the real enemy. So the enemy, like you said, is not ourselves. Um, we know who the enemy is. We face it every day. You know, when we go out, like you said, when we go out and a, a police car get behind us, we feel like our heart about to drop out of, out of our end part. So I'm saying, just feel like you about to have a heart attack, and even though you're not even doing nothing wrong. <laughs> and everybody can understand that. Everybody go go through that. I even been through that before. I'm saying, so I know how that feels personally. Even though you're not doing nothing wrong, it's just that something in you that automatically triggers something in you to make you afraid of the police. Or You know what I'm saying? They just ride by. I'm saying, but we afraid to get pulled over because I'm saying it's just, it's insane. Exactly how he explained it. So, um, especially us, um, bringing our children in to do what they do and express themselves and give some knowledge and wisdom, which we all should be doing, um, with our children every day, giving them this ability to, to teach them and to show them things that we weren't able to, um, to understand because you know, I didn't I didn't get raised up knowing about Marcus Garvey or Malcolm X or certain people in the revolution. I wish I would have because I mean it's not my mom and dad's fault because they wasn't taught. So I wish I would have that ability. But since we are people now in this time and age to where we have a door of information coming in. So we're able to teach our young ones how um, to not be blinded and to always, you know, seek knowledge and wisdom instead of doctrine and making them believe in certain things, let them have the freedom of their own mind to express themselves and be who they are. So it's just really important that we all, um, we do our part. Is if we don't, you know, is we gonna be stuck. I'm saying, so if, if we don't fight, then who will? So I really, sure. I really do appreciate what was talked about tonight and I hope everybody um, enjoyed it. And I appreciate everyone who tuned in to my live broadcast, even though I kept getting knocked off like fifty thousand. Yeah, they, nah, they they were like really because they were. I guess they were mad because they got they got me, and I guess it'd be too obvious if they got you too. So it's like yeah, so they just yeah, like, they just like man, we not. I, I never seen yeah, never happened at all. So it knocked me off like yeah. three times, and I had to just yeah start my whole phone over again. And, so and, it's crazy. And for some of y'all out there, I know you may have experienced this where your phone is fully charged, and you could be in a discussion, something real heavy, and all of a sudden. Your phone, the conversation cuts off and your phone, phone cut off. Cut off. Just cut off. Everything cut off. You cut it back on, the battery's low. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all kind of different things they do. And it's, it's kind of the messed up part about it is that, um, and it's also a part of um, uh, what um, in their warfare against us, they have something known as their trans black human agenda or transhuman agenda. And in this transhuman agenda, they create a dependency. 
um, on objects. So we have now some of us dependencies on these cell phones, on the internet, on social media, on the TV, um, everything being, um, for the most part, um, it seems like it's easier for you. But when they remove that, because it's really the grid, when they remove it from you or shut it down, then you become a notorious, I mean, you have become a notorious dependent on it mm -hmm. and don't know what to do after it's gone. Yeah, and that's what they're in the process of doing now. They're removing Medicare, Medicaid, food stamps, housing assistance, welfare, all of that. I mean, they remove it from people, even though our people, it's not the white people have it way more than we do, but yeah. still people are dependent on that. And it's something that's, you know, it's very serious. So we have to create a, a doorway for our own people to have that when they can come to us for it. So they can we, they can come for come to us for health care, for money, for housing. That's what we're trying to develop, and that's what that's what the movement is about is creating our own so we can help our own people. So that's that's what we're doing. Indeed. So indeed, that's basically what it's about, and and it's important that you understand and the whole situation with um with Kaepernick as. The Queen was discussing earlier in the RBPP news. You know, this is a very uh, messed up place that you're at. Mm -hmm. You know, him, some of you are so ignorant that you will say, well, you know, he, he's a hybrid, he's a half. You don't. <laughs> and all of that is propaganda. Mm -hmm. All that is propaganda. It's not facts. Mm -hmm. uh, we know um, that according to genetics, the science, empirical science of genetics, and empirical science of biology that when a person, a black person, has a child with a white person, genetically speaking, this is just basic. You can learn this in the seventh grade. You don't have to get, have a doctorate or master's or any degree to know this. You learn this in middle school, that when the two come together, black is dominant, genetically speaking, and the white is recessive. Mm -hmm. And so what ends up happening is that the child that comes out is dominant and not recessive. So that's the concept. You can get out of black, you can get any, any you get white, whatever, but out of white, you can only get that which in and of itself is white because black is dominant, white is recessive. You can get the recessive from the dominant, but not the dominant from the recessive. That's basic Mendelian biology. I mean, it's basic. I mean, it doesn't get any any um, any uh, more plain and simple than that. So if that's the case, if you would actually ostracize people who have a parent that's other than black, then let's deal with it like this. All of you are victims in the same light of that. Then, you know, your name Jackson Johnson Smith. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much you throw on it, how mm -hmm. much, um, how much, uh, our men <laughs> you throw out there, how much our set you throw out there, yep. how much you know, uh, what's the best way, patars you throw out there. Yep. You still Jackson Johnson Smith and Williams and all that other stuff, mm -hmm. and which means that the slave masters raped your grandmother, and so you got the same issue. So cut it out. And we wouldn't be who we are and where we are if if we didn't have that genetic ability. That's not racism. That's not pseudoscience. That is empirical, biological, genetic facts that black is dominant and white is genetically recessive. When we come together, the child comes out with, with the dominant. And that's basically what it is. There's no such thing when it comes to race as a half or a hybrid. It's either one or the other in that particular context. So I say that to say what he did made them ostracize him. You can say whatever you want to say about him, but to them, he's just another nigga that disrespected their national anthem. And for that, he will suffer. Mm -hmm. That same thing like she was talking with Tiger Woods. He could say all the stuff he wanted to say was a cobbler Cajun, everything other than black, but they called him a fried chicken collard greens eating nigga. That's what they, that's what they, that's what they called him. <laughs> oh, they really? give it all that stuff. He said all this. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, put it like this. A slave master raped your grandmother's mm -hmm. And your parents came out they won't. Well, rape your great grandmother and your great grandparents came out their womb. I mean, your great grandparents came out the womb of the rape and they sold those babies. Mm -hmm. The slave masters direct seed developed in the womb of a black African woman and they sold those babies on the block. They didn't separate them babies from any other African people. So you got to understand and stop being stupid mm -hmm. and falling for their foolishness. Yep. And I'm saying that to, to, to be clear with you. Don't ever do that. Now, I know y'all, some of y'all will be slick because you see, um, you say, well, he probably said it, maybe his, my queen got two chocolate pair. Well, they, <laughs> they, they black enough. So, so, so just let's get that clear. Number one. So I'm, I'm definitely black. not saying that for that. I'm reason. Asiatic, but I'm African. I'm, I'm African. I'm Asiatic. See my eyes. Yes, of course. Yes. But this, you know, there's just how it is being 
black. We create all shades and colors, and, all shapes. And, and, and let me be clear if you say Asiatic, because she just she dealing with science and teachers now. Both of her parents is black. Okay? I know that. Both my, I just said that. Okay, both of them are black. I'm not not so she, meaning that I got an Asian parent. <laughs> I'm just saying. And, and you know, too, and, and the teachings, when we say that kind of stuff, some of y'all get crazy. Some of y'all didn't allow Cohen and propaganda to attack some of our best teachers, like Dr. Bilal Muhammad, when he taught us that that we um dealing with Asiatic. He didn't he wasn't trying to disrespect Africa when he said that. It was mm -hmm. the fact that the enemy had created so much propaganda on Africa. And he was trying to explain to us that it's more to what they're talking about. And when he said it, he was talking about when the earth was one continent, mm -hmm. um, and which in science is called, of course, Pangea, uh, Pangea, depending on how you want to pronounce it, or Pangea. Um, he was talking about that, 196,940,000 square miles when it was together. And he was talking about that, the entire earth on uh, one and us being there, he used that term. Now, we know even that word doesn't mean anything other than relate, related to being in the Orient or dealing with the sun, and we are the children of the sun. Mm -hmm. um, there's no such thing as the Middle East, the Far East, or Near East. Mm -hmm. All that is is words to describe how far a place was from Britain when they actually conquered and pillaged the world. Mm -hmm. You know, so basically what you call the Middle East today is Northeast Africa. Right. That's all it is. Syria, yeah. Libya, yeah. Well, Iran. These Egypt, these so-called Middle East, and, right, and the rest, all Africa, and the rest of it is still a part of melanated people. Still a part of it, no matter what it is. That's uh, what they don't want to show us. You know, they, the war, they, they dropping bombs on Syrian people and stuff and like and stuff like that. It's just they they killing a lot of us right now. And, and we don't know. And I tell you what, any of these countries, and those of you who've been in the U.S. military service, and you've been in these countries, you know, when you go to the countryside of these countries, you'll find black people there mm -hmm. as the the like the native native people there. But they show you people um, different on oh, yeah. TV yeah. to try to confuse you. But you'll find it that way. And then you then sometimes they try to make it look like they came from someplace else. Mm -hmm. Like in Libya, when they assassinated Muammar Gaddafi, they did things like that. But just understand and basically for the most part realize and know better. And when you know better and realize you got to show better. Mm -hmm. Understand what I'm saying? So it's very important. But I definitely thank you for dropping that. Mm. Very powerful. Yeah. Very, very powerful. But another thing, we are not a hate group. Who we said are that? Not, I'm said just, nope, nope. I'm just saying. You <laughs> just saying for people who, who just now, like, really, like, really just coming in to see what we're doing. They see the panther in the back. They see our panther right here. We're not a hate group. And we say, you know, we say cracker. And I can basically break down why we say cracker. And it's not a racist term, and we're not being racist. The cracker comes from a term that our ancestors used to describe the slave master or the overseer because they would hit us with whips and they would make a cracking noise. So they call them the crackers. It's not a racist thing. That's just how our ancestors used the term to, de um, to define them. So I'm just cleaning it up right now because I don't have my people. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't know why they would say that. But sometimes people sometimes like we just, sometimes we get sick out of our minds and that's the problem. But we also don't want to ostracize any members of the family. And that's right. what that's, and what that's not what I'm trying to do. So I, that's why I had to just really just say that too because and, I don't want to. And when I say members of the family, don't take my I'm saying members of the family because she was just talking about when she mentioned Christian. I was just I want to say just like let me hey. I know I'm just <laughs> we can get on there no time yeah, it's late though, but, but I can break it down yeah, for you too. But the but the so, point, yeah. Because we all ain't nothing wrong with true Christians. True yeah. Christians to know that Jesus is black. That's all I'm saying. And, I'm a, and that's and another. And his name not even Jesus. I'm not saying. But but that's another issue too, that some of you don't understand the psychological damage we have. Some of you, when you um, start talking about this stuff, well, you know the damn Christian so and so and so. It's not the fact that that a lot of you are trying to disseminate truth. What it is is that it's how your parents and your family members treated you with it. And when you left it and they start telling you, you the devil and you're going to hell. And so you're doing everything so in your power to get back at them. And that's why a lot of the stuff you're doing, the debate, the yeah. division, all of that. But do understand that there's not a spiritual system right. on this planet that don't have us as the root of right. it. Right. We come, it's all about us. All and no us. matter what it is, whether it's myth, whether it's reality, whether it's fictional, whether it's just traditional, you always find us at the root and base of it, no matter mm -hmm. what. Even when some of these... White supremacist bastards try to hide behind that Nordic stuff. Udine was black. Udine was black. Wooten was black. All of them 
are dealing with the tuckiness people of Europe. So you can't even run now. Mm -hmm. They took the goddamn swastika um, from East India among melanated people. But not only that, it's deeper, deeper, deeper science to that because then the base of that is Jian Yame, an African and Denkra symbol. And dealing with, we know what Jian Yame means, the omnipotent power and presence of, just speaking in the African spiritual system now, I'm not trying to get too spiritual with you all, of the Most High. So, in essence, even when they do or try to claim certain things from a racist basis, it still don't make any sense because it has a black origin. Look at Udine, and you can see, I'm not talking about no fake fairy tale cartoon pictures they made, but I'm talking about the actual anthropological images of him and artifacts and things like that. And you would note that even that is black. And I'm not just trying to say everything is, but Hell, the SLC two for A five gene deficiency just came about roughly fifty seven hundred years ago, and before that, science tells that hmm. people were SLC two for A five gene sufficient, which means black. Hmm. And after that, then white or skin whiteness came, which according to science, and this is not racism or anything, SLC two for A five gene deficiency created that. Right. So you said that science. I mean, you can look it up. It's proof. Uh, oh, oh, it's proof. You, you can look it up. It's proof. Look it up. Origins of skin whiteness. S SLC two for A five gene deficiency is the origins of white people and skin mm -hmm. whiteness. So in essence, and that's not that long ago. That means just, just mutation. Just a few it's thousand a years ago, <laughs> and it's not racist. It's just no, science. It's and it's so science. I'm saying that to get into the thick skull of the racist white supremacists. Who has nothing better to do? Have you seen some of the comments they leave at places? It makes no sense. They'll say things like, black people are on welfare. Oh, you guys are killing each other. The same old stuff that has that don't is just mumbo jumbo. It has no merit. It don't mean anything. And then when you kick some facts to them, they either run or, or just say, I agree with you. You agree with me? All that hateful stuff you were saying you agree? Man, get out of here, man. So thank all of you for listening. Uh, we leave you with revolutionary love and black power you have anything you want to express before um, we go um i think i really um, said everything i wanted to say i think i really could go longer but it's late and everybody has to go to work stuff like that i understand it so yeah tomorrow is friday yeah so um i just really appreciate everybody taking time out to listen and tune in because you know facebook has a lot of things going on on it uh, Find videos, fighting videos, twerking videos, <laughs> all that. But you you decided to come here and get some knowledge and stray Indeed. away from that poison and elevate your mind. So that's all we're trying to do, give you a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of wisdom on your timeline. So hopefully everybody, you know, enjoyed it. Um we will be back next Thursday also. Um this is be this is something that we're gonna be doing every week. So um I hope you guys enjoyed it and if you wanna join you can reach out to myself or you can reach Dr. Ali Muhammad. His page right now is just, is like he's on Facebook in Facebook jail for 30 days for no reason. Yeah, that's so, how they crack the crack talking to you. For they no reason. Talking to you in the social media and the real life for me, no reason. It was like one of the situations where I was down the street and like, get your ass on the ground, Dr. Ali, and they just got me. Because they ain't give me no explanation. They just the shit was so just blocked. Off, like, but um out here. But here's the other thing too. Um you can reach me on another page. A L I Ali Middle Initial O M U H A M M A D in the meantime. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now also, if you want to join, you can inbox myself or inbox the deputy chief. Um, you know her page. Um, it is Amina A M I N A uh Zuri Z U R I A S E T Aset M M M A A T M A A T. My you can reach her there. Uh, you can also reach us at www.therevolutionaryblackpantherparty.org. Oh, without what? www.therevolutionaryblackpantherparty.org. Make sure it's the. www.therevolutionaryblackpantherparty.org. You can reach us there. Or you can also um, give us a call on our national hotline. I had the hotline up a moment ago. When I was telling y'all to call in. Also, our mission is to feed, clothe, shelter, train, and defend our people. So, if you are about serving your community, cleaning up your community, educating, 
your community and the youth and the people inside of your community, your families and all of that. You know what I'm saying? If you really are feeling that and you really want a foundation to, to help you um, with your path, then this is a place for you. We have all type of people that's with us. We have Bloods, Crips. <laughs> Muslims, Christians, GDs, um, vice Hindu lords. people, Buddhist people, GDs, vice lords, anything that you could possibly think of, that's what we have that. And that's, that right there is a foundation for unity. And our foundation is righteousness and to bring balance and justice and uh, peace back to the earth. So that's, that's where our foundation is at, is not to, you know, get over on people, not to mislead people. You have your own mind here. You express yourself the way you want to. You be who you are. So if you want to um, further, you know, your yourself and, and your life path duty, you know, um, you're more than welcome to join us. and Or even if you want to support, um, either way, it will just be great to the movement and the power of us. So I really appreciate everybody for tuning in. And the, you said the number? Yeah, the, the actual national hotline number is area code 877-235-3318. That's 877-235-3318. That's 877-235-3318. That's the national hotline number. You can reach us there as well. The website, again, is www.therevolutionaryblackpantherparty.org. That's www.therevolutionaryblackpantherparty.org. And if you are interested in contributing or, or for the most part, supporting in any way that you can, you can go to the Join Us portion on that page and scroll down on that page where it says to support the REPP for contributions. Please click button below, and then you can click on that button below to support um, the Revolutionary Black Panther Party and our work and our efforts, but you can reach us at www.therevolutionarypantherparty.org. That's www.therevolutionarypantherparty.org. And you can get the archives to this broadcast audio form on www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash Revolutionary Black Panther Party. You can get this archives and the actual broadcast before this one dealing with toxic jealousy, self hatred as a pathology amongst our people, disorder. Uh, bunks our people and you can also get it on youtube and it should be titled on youtube dr ali which is a l l i two l's and i dr ali muhammad break down or the origins of self-hatred and jealousy amongst black people i think it should be titled as that and this will be going up as well uh, very powerful uh, so far it's a lot of support from the family there um very 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 good so revolutionary love and black power, if you're interested in joining, let us know. If you're interested in joining, you can even write there in the timeline if you if you want to join. And we'll get right black with you. And you can inbox on wherever you're listening to. And let us know in the inbox that you're interested in joining. Our military mission family is to feed, clothes, shelter, train, and defend our people. As the deputy chief basically just explained to you, that's what I coined, low and black collectivism. And I developed and coined that because this is a solution to the existence of humanity and ourselves. Food, clothes, shelter, and the skills to actually maintain all of that and the ability to protect and defend it. So that's lower end black collectivism. That's what the Revolution Black Panther Party is based on. Now, in essence, this is in order to bring into existence which I coined high end black collectivism, which is the people being self sufficient in a position to do for self. And that's very important, especially the grid shutdown. So, Ooh, Rebel- what we all going? What we, what will we do if the grid shut down? Right. So that's how you got to think about that. Like, what in the world are we gonna do? How are we gonna take care of our our children? But the Shango, but the Shango, very good. And um, I'll definitely be in touch with you. What you can do right now, brother Shango, is inbox me also. Thank you. But, but I see your information, and I'll be right black in touch with you. But revolutionary black life power, and black brother. power. And black congratulate, power. give them a round of applause and black power salute. Black power. Black power. Revolutionary black power. love, Brother yeah, Shango. But, you know, we have to think about that. The medicines that we are, you know, you know, we need, uh, the food that we need, how to purify your water, how to purify air, you know, how to grow your food inside of your home, um, how to make your own clothes, you know, everything from what we use today, how to basically maneuver through that and you can remake that and recreate that when whenever the grid shut down. So it's something we need to have a skill of. 
Super also, but that was a good point you made. But black but, power and, and very love. very important what she said too. Just to add before we close out, what what would you do if the grid shut down tomorrow? And that's what, what would I, you do? No money, no credit cards, no gas, none. Of that. I mean, all the gas be on the food. I mean, people be rioting and stealing all the food. So what? Would, what do what you, you do, do if the <laughs> grid shut do? down? So that's the ultimate question. What would you do, and what do you do? When the grid shuts down. Mm -hmm. So what would you do and what do you do? But that's where our training comes in. We train you how to grow your own food. We train you how to actually set up a perimeter around your homes or your property and your facilities. We've trained you how to do interior security and exterior security. How to deputize a captain that will be able to protect and defend the home. How to deputize somebody that's responsible for health and hygiene. How to deputize somebody uh, who's responsible for serious conditions. Including if you got sick, how we would separate and quarantine people in a certain position or certain area until they were able to actually get better. So, so these are the particular things that we do and we train you. Not just that, but multifaceted levels of training because our people must survive. Our people must survive. So it's important that our people understand the importance of training. The importance of knowing. So we train you. That's a part of our training. That's what training means. We train you on all different levels of survival in every way. Because one thing is that they make us so dependent that if the grid shut down, we couldn't eat a dollar. We couldn't eat two dollars and three dollars and four dollars. Can't even burn so, it though, because it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a lot of chemicals and it doesn't, it's not good to breathe in. So you can't burn the money. And, and do you brother can't God? Your butt with right. It. Can't eat it. Right. And so we got to learn it. But I'm going to tell y'all something, a quick lesson before we go. Um, here's a quick lesson. See, here's what the enemies have done. Okay, put it like this. If the grid shut down, that paper money, the cards, nothing. All of that is nothing. You, you, you lost, I mean, you can't even burn that for to make yourself warm or for anything because the damn chemicals are just, you know, mess you up. But here's the thing about it now. Okay. What is it? See, here's actual facts. And this is what I teach. Money is not the solution to our problem. It's a tool that we're supposed to use. A tool. Like a shovel, rake, or spoon. Okay? Like a, like you use a hammer. See, we get confused. So, if we understand money is a tool, we can utilize it better and utilize it properly. It's like a hammer or a shovel, rake, or spoon. Now, what good is it to depend on the collection of a box of hammers? You have your tools collected, but that's not your dependency. What, what the dependency is, is the resources you use those tools for. For example, we used to have seeds and tools outside in the environment where we would grow our own food, build our homes, maintain our environment. We built pyramids, palaces, projects, and great temples. Well, pyramids, palaces, and great temples, and great yeah. walls, and things of that nature. We built that. So these we are the things that. we did. We built that. We did that. And resources. What are resources? Food, clothes. Uh, uh, having the skills to maintain it, training, all of that. So those are in the resources. Here's what our enemies do. The ones who make the paper, the Rothschilds, the Oppenheimers, the, the, the globalists and others, hmm. they make that paper, right? But what's their concern? The resources. They patent trees on the continent of Africa. They, they patent the land on the continent of Africa. Their concern is Food, clothes, shelter, land, and the resources. Why they have you chasing the tool? But they throw the tool out there. So we got to understand how to collect the resources. Use the tool, but collect the resources because the tool ain't going to last forever. Mm -hmm. And understand a tool means that you may have to utilize another tool. Meaning that if the grit shut down, I don't have it. They may, I might have to do something else to get it. You know what I'm saying? Use a different tool like my foot, like my hand. <laughs> You know, like a chop or something <laughs> if you have to. But we shouldn't have to resort to that. But I'm just saying a tool is a tool, shovel, rake, or spoon. Right. But resources is the solution. And hence is the military mission of the Revolutionary Black Panther Party to feed, clothe, shelter, train, and defend our people, which I coined and developed as low end black collectivism in order for our people to be self sufficient with unlimited resources and super abundance doing for self. I thank all of y'all for listening. I love y'all. Revolutionary power. love and black power. And it's playing beautiful, beautiful, beautiful information tonight. Revolutionary love. And you can reach us again here. Um, and I'll be live through the Ali O. Muhammad. 
Of course, they didn't come after that one, but I'll have another one. It's all good. I didn't think I could pull it off, but crackers, y'all don't know who y'all messing with. And um, here at the Queens, Amina Zuri, Aset Muhammad, the Deputy Chief of the Revolutionary Black Panther Party. Revolutionary Thank love and black power to each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. If you're interested, like I said, let us know. And you can reach us at www.therevolutionaryrepentheparty.org, www.therevolutionaryrepentheparty.org, and I'm talking fast. <laughs> and you can also reach us at, you can you can um, get this archive audio form at www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash revolutionary black panther party. That's without the dub. And of course, it'll be on YouTube pretty soon on the Revolutionary Panther Party channel. And right now, the previous one is on YouTube. It's entitled Dr. Ali Muhammad. MD, that's Ali with two and I, MD, break down the origins of self-hate and jealousy amongst black people. Thank y'all for listening. Revolutionary love and black power, family. Black power.